April 18th meeting of the select board. Uh, roll call vote. John Round? Here. Brian Solisey? Here. Kathy Blotta? Here. And Harrison? Here. Becky sure. Jakes is here. <laughs> First off, we have public comment on items not on the agenda. Is there any public comment today on items not on the agenda? Okay, no hands. So we will move on to the chairman's report and action items. Uh, first, for the chairman's report, I do want to let every uh, the select board members know that um, Debbie has put a calendar on SharePoint. SharePoint, so you may now go in and enter your own dates of being away. So that'll be. Does that require us knowing how to use SharePoint? <laughs> a little bit, but not much, Brian. Just throw that out there. It's, we, we can do a little primer on that. Uh, let's is see. it in the select board folder? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's a select board yeah. folder? Well, there are two. There's one with a little red and a, another with a blue. Go to the blue. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's where I found it. Um, and yeah, we'll I did forward everybody two emails um, regarding one is uh, um, for Officer Mullins for who's going to be graduating. And the other is uh, regarding a housing forum and I'm not able to attend either of those. So um, I think the housing forum would actually be quite interesting. I'm not sure, I got the one on Officer Mullins. When was the one from the housing forum? Uh, same time, I sent not together, but I did send them. Otherwise I will send them along again. I got the Officer Mullins one. I did not right. receive the other one. Okay, I'll send one. them yeah, along, along again. Yeah, that was statewide or something. It, it came from Seth Moulton's office. Right. Anyway, I can I can send that again, but we don't we saw that. Okay, so going over the action items, we have um, the let's see. We're not going to talk about the TA report right now, the discussion of staffing changes and land use departments, we will move that to May, uh, preferably the first meeting in May, Greg? Yes. Okay, so May 1. Next up, we have Water Resource Protection Task Force update, which we'll be getting today. Um, <clears throat> Brian- And I, and I will text, uh, I'll text Steve for the appropriate time. Because they have a meeting tonight. Yes, so yeah. he has to get pulled away from that. But. Okay, wonderful. And Chuck, and I believe Nate will be on that as well. Um, Brian, um, any updates on the proposed human rights and inclusion committee? Uh, nothing. We were still waiting on the governance uh, mm -hmm. uh, ultimate uh, decisions or how we're going to proceed at this point. Okay, so we should move that to which meeting? because we are doing governance, some governance that this yeah. evening. Um, why don't we tentatively move that to May 1 and we'll see if we have enough information at that point. Select board goals governance project. We have Susan Beckman here. So we'll be going over that as well. Um, policies are doing, we're going to that on May 1. Mm -hmm. Then Western Woods discussion will be May 15th. And uh, facility master plan that's later on this year. So, all Some right. Things I think might be missing. Um, we're still missing the action of the schedule, the performance reviews, the quarterly performance reviews. I really don't want to be the watchdog on that. I, they so don't. That they don't up. happen unless I remind us. And I would like to not. I'm sorry. But have to be the the quarterly performance reviews for Todd and for yourself. We're contractually obligated to do them for Todd, and and um, I just we we do those, and it's not you know that's not your sole responsibility right. on it's that. It's not, but, but it's I not do on the think action item list. It should be on the right. action item list. All right, Debbie, if you would add that one, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, and then to that, we should also have um, fire chiefs on that as well. So. Okay, any other updates or information that um, members want to? 
Were there actions from the Joint Finance Committee meeting that are not on this list? I didn't have time to review my notes from the Joint Finance Committee meeting, but we certainly had a lot of discussion and I thought we took some actions and um, Greg, of, um, I think we have those. Yeah, I think we need to ask you to review those notes and add the appropriate actions to the action. Okay, so we're adding the performance reviews and that should be three separate ones since we have three different staff for that. And then we want the joint FinCom um, meeting as well. All right, Debbie? Yep. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, then first up we have, and this is very exciting. Um, Kitty Weaver. Uh, and Kitty, would you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a, about um, the event, the recognition and event, please. Kitty Weaver, 26 Bridge Street, as I say at the town meeting. Um, I'm here because I think Debbie sent out to a lot of you a blurb about the Navajo group, small dance group that's coming here on the 18th of May. Um, the reason they're coming here. Um, I'm, can I assume that all of you have read what Debbie said here? Mm -hmm. So I don't have to go into too much of the history background. Um, there were two men who signed the Navajo Treaty in 1868. Um, General, General Sherman of Civil War fame of Ohio and Samuel Tappan of Manchester by the sea. Um, the Navajo Treaty uh, was June 1st, 1868. And today they still celebrate Treaty Day. June 1st for them is like our July 4th. It brought them, they had been removed from their homelands. They were taken on the long walk. You may have heard of that. Cherokees had the Trail of Tears. The Navajos had the long walk. They were driven three to 400 miles into terrible land in Eastern New Mexico. They were imprisoned there for four years. It was a treaty that sent them home. This is the only treaty of the 375 treaties that were signed by the government that actually sent a tribe back to their homeland. So the treaty and the men who signed them are revered. And this young group who is coming here, they want to bless Tappan's house because of that signing. They have also blessed Sherman's house already. They were there in Lancaster, Ohio, Population 40,000, we know what our population is here, a little different. Um, but I hope we can welcome them here with open arms. They will be dancing at the Coal Chapel at 6.30 starting. It's a different venue for them, if any of you know. If any of you have been down the basement of Roll Coal Chapel, that they're, they're gonna have to change their clothes. They're not cold <laughs> costumes, they are traditional dress. They're gonna have to change down there, come up and go down that long aisle and then perform. So anyway, I'm hoping everybody can be there. At, it's traditional at the ends of these programs to have an exchange of gifts. So I'm hoping from Manchester that we can have some sort of certificate thanking them from coming all this way. They're making a very big move to come all this way to the East Coast. They've never been here before. They've never seen the ocean. They're going to be here for a couple of days. They will also, after they're going to be with us, they're going down to Cape Ann Museum. They'll be down there on Friday for two performances, one at 11 and one at one. So I'm hoping with, with a certificate from us and a little gifts, Debbie, you said they're a little something that's a, are representative of this area, we can give to them. They may be giving us something, we will give them something. But I'm also hoping that one of you lovely folks here can make the presentation to them at the end of the program. I will leave that up to you. I'm going to be MC for lack of anybody else being MC. Um, but I think it's going to be an interesting evening. And I thank you for your time. And if anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thank you very much. I, I think this is uh, very exciting and quite an honor for our town. Um, and one which I'm looking forward to. I hope so. And do you? Do you know, um, or is there any guidance on what is um, appropriate in terms of gift exchange? Well, I know they give something usually very uh, simple, something that's representative of their Navajo Nation, whether it's feathers or something that's representative of them. 
And so there's the same kind of exchange from us. Although this may change, they were just at Sherman's house. And I'm not sure what they gave there. I've been in touch with the director of the museum there. Um, so it's, it's something simple, something not mm -hmm. elaborate. And how many um, how many people will be coming from the Navajo Nation? I neglected to mention that I thought it was going to be six. It's a small group. It's actually going to be five. It'll be the director and four dancers. And do they have accommodations? They have accommodations through moi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I work with uh, Cape Ann Museum, Miranda Aisling down there, and they are going to be staying at the Vista Motel in Gloucester. And so there'll be two nights coming here. They'll be here Wednesday night and Thursday to perform Thursday, and then they go down there on Friday. Okay. So they'll be staying at a motel. Um, <laughs> because of Lancaster, Ohio being 40,000, they have chain motels. So they stayed at a Holiday Inn in Lancaster. We don't have any Holiday Inns here. So we have a little more mom and pop motels, which I think they are, they're going to enjoy. They're a young group. The dancers are teenagers and the director's in his early 40s. Um, the, he's going to give a more elaborate uh, lecture at Cape Ann. He's going to use a PowerPoint mm -hmm. there. I was discouraging a PowerPoint here at Crawl Chapel. I wasn't sure that it was. He's going to do a simpler program here on his lecture, and then the dancers will come after that. The whole program should be about an hour and a half with no break, unless we all stand up and stretch. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So will this be um, <clears throat> in the cricket as well? Yes. Uh, I hope Erica is going to put something in. The, um, the library has picked up on this and is, co is partnering. Uh, they're putting everything out on their websites, the Park and Recs, Parks and Rec is putting 2,000 things are going to go out for them. <laughs> Hopefully, Eric is going to put an, an article in. Mm -hmm. uh, seating is limited, so you do have to register through the library. Um, so hopefully, we'll have a crowd. Wonderful. Thank you, Kitty. Any other um, comments or questions from the board? John? No, right. I look forward to it. John knows about this. Yes, He's I do. He's known about it for a while <laughs> through different venues. I assume the waterfront mansion is kind of a, as part of the gift, gifting them. Yeah, we have a couple on the market right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no questions. Yeah, I think, no, just to say I will be out of town those days. I am so sorry to miss it, but I, I hope they enjoy their time here. I don't know if there's going to be a video of this. I've not asked the question. Some of this is so spiritual for them that they do not want any cameras. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, I have a feeling that at Cole Chapel, they will, um, some of it will be, if people able to take pictures and I haven't inquired about video. They will be using, the Sean Price, the director, will be using a microphone. Although I'm told that Paul, the acoustics are so good that you don't necessarily need anything. So we'll see what happens, but I've got somebody lined up. <laughs> Thank you for putting this together, and um, maybe we might think about um, giving them one of the histories of Manchester that's still in print, that the okay, historic. That's one of them. Yeah, yeah that's, that's one, one, one of those, and there were a couple yeah. of suggestions. And of course, there's very little written about indigenous folks here in town, yeah. so the history of Manchester starts out with, you know, yeah, right. Marvella right. coming in the harbor, yes. Yeah. yeah, no harbor, but. Um, well, but there may still, be a yeah. touch on tap, and then. And, 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 Thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. For Looking forward to it. Okay. Um, next up, we have interviews for, thank you again, Kitty, um, for Historical District and Historic District Commission. We have Allison Moreland and Paul Strimple. Okay. Okay, Allison, I'd like to tell us a little bit about why you. Um, are interested, we did receive your um, the application you submitted. Well, great, thank you. So I have lived in Manchester, I guess for almost 10 years now, and I have been 
sort of eager to get involved to figure out how I might use my skills and free time to help support the place that I find um, so joyous to live in. And so whenever I saw that this um, became available, that there were a couple spots open, I thought, what better way? I am myself very interested in preserving my own property and what that looks like um, to stay true to sort of what drew us to this area. And so it feels like a sort of foot in the door for uh, sort of volunteering, giving back to the town. Wonderful, thank you. Absolutely. Sean? Great, yeah. Great, thanks for uh, volunteering, Allison. And uh, uh, this this committee, of which I am a member, also as you know, and it's very tough to fill slots there because there are so many requirements, and you meet one of them. You live in the historic district, so <laughs> so I'm I'm just curious. Is there anything particular in the historic district that you're looking at that you say, you know, I'd like to work on this or work on that mm -hmm. right now? You've lived there ten years, so you've got some perspective. Maybe. In in regard to Hmm. Ooh, this is tricky. I don't know. I feel like this might get political, but I am um, not necessarily um, the <laughs> specific aesthetics in the historic district. That aside, I'm really interested in the functionality of the village area of town. I am a pedestrian with two dogs and also a cyclist. And so I'm really interested to see how Manchester keeps what makes it so special but evolves to meet the needs of where I feel like we need to go as a town in the world um, thinking about we're going to need to become less reliant on cars. I'm lucky to work in town as well so getting to work is easy for me where I don't need a car um, but I'm eager to see that like how we can keep it quaint small but make it more safe for folks to not be so reliant on cars would be like the top thing, not, yeah. but it's not necessarily sort of within the bounds of the historic district. I do know that, but that's my answer. Okay, good. <laughs> Tough when you're dealing with historic norms. Yeah, but I think it's important to have that balance, right? Yeah. Innovation with tradition. Good. Great. Thank you for your mm -hmm. comments. Good, Absolutely. and for volunteering. Ryan? No, I'm good, thank you. Kathy? That was the exact question I was going to ask. <laughs> um, just um, given your interest, stated interest, you also might call into a uh, bike and ped committee meeting or downtown others. improvement. So those may be other interest areas for you. But thank you. Any other questions? Um, and there are overlaps with those, obviously. So that, um, Anne? Oh, no. I... Enthusiasm and knowledge of the district kind of cover what I'm interested in. I assume you have enough time for the meetings and, and whatever research and background work has to be done. Definitely. Yeah, I work at Brookwood, so I have I have a very balanced life in regards to demands there and elsewhere. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And questions I would have asked have been asked and answered. So thank you. Um, let's see, we have, one more applicant, and that is Paul Strumpel, who we see is Paul here. Paul, are you attending via Zoom? I don't see him either. Something may have come up. So, um, How many um, slot, uh, empty positions are there? With the resignation of Don Halgren, that leaves, I thought it was two, two, but I got something that said three. Yeah, I'm not aware of three. I'm I thought it was two. Two with oh, this. Two plus Don. No. 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 I okay. actually have that. Yeah, I was looking at that on yeah, yeah. mine. <clears throat> well, typically, we, if we have more people applying than openings, um, sometimes we'll wait. However, I move that we approve the nomination of Allison Moreland to the oh, Historic District Commission. I second that. Um, may I ask for a friendly amendment of the term? 
<clears throat> well, so it's a, I believe it's a vacancy that um, expires this coming June. So you could do it for three years from this June. And we're close enough to that date. Three point. So it's it'd be, starting now. So it will be starting now through 26. Okay, would you accept Absolutely. that friendly amendment? Through 26. John? Yes. Thank you. Moved by Ann Harrison, seconded by John Round, friendly amendment by Becky, and roll call vote. Ann Harrison? Yes. Kathy Blotta? Yes. Brian Solisey? Yes. John Round? Yes. And Becky Jake says yes. Allison, thank you very much. And welcome to the, to the crew of volunteers. Thank you. Thank you as well. Um, just FYI, when we collected information from the town committees, the head of the historical commission said there was one vacancy at that time. So if there's a new resignation, then I would think there's exactly. Yes. exactly. And that's what I had, made, mm -hmm. had noted. So, um, Debbie, could we reach out to Paul? Would yeah. you be able and, and just yeah, see if he said he was going to be here, but well, things okay. happen. Yeah, I'll, I'll that, reach so. back out to him. Okay, and if he hops on later, we can come back to this. Okay, next up we have um, LGBTQ plus progress flag raising in June. How are you, yeah. Hope? That would be me. Hope off with the Putnam Court. Almost a lifelong resident of the Um, So it's a multicultural evening this evening, clearly. <laughs> so I'm here to ask Manchester to join Hamilton, Lennon, Roxford, Coxville, Middleton, Beverly, Salem, Peabody, Danvers, Newburyport, Marblehead, Amesbury, and Lynn uh, of North Shore towns that I know of. They're having a progress flag raising in June to celebrate LGBTQ plus month. Um, I'm the honored founder and president of North Shore Pride. We've been in existence for 12 years. And every year we celebrate a culmination of prides um, um, in June. And so as a Manchester resident, I'm here uh, asking uh, for permission to fly the progress flag, which includes the unisex symbol, which is an all-inclusive progress flag, um, not only on the town flagpole, uh, which we designate as the town flagpole. As far as I know, we haven't changed that in front of town hall. I've also asked us here if we could please, as we do, uh, I believe for the month of July, uh, flag, uh, fly the progress flag on the 19 poles that are on the harbor railing, as we do fly the American flag during the month of July. Uh, that is my request. Um, I will provide all of the flags at my financial cost, and I appreciate your consideration. Answer any questions. Thank you very much, Hope. Um, Anne? I would like to make a motion that's related but not directly on this <clears throat> request, which is that we proclaim um, the month of June to be LGBTQ month in Manchester, and that we prepare proclamation uh, to be presented on the 1st of June. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, roll call vote. Yes. Ann Harrison. Kathy Blotter. Yes. Brian Solisey. Yes. John Round. Yes. And Becky Jake says yes. It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, so related to the flag raising in June, and we have happily and proudly done this twice, mm -hmm. and we're just we're three. We've Thank done you. it so much. We didn't do it during COVID. We didn't do it much of anything during COVID. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, any questions for Hope regarding the flag raising? And I, I have. No problem whatsoever with the flag raising. Um, I um, the the poles um, on Beach Street. There are nineteen in recognition of the nineteen uh, Manchester residents who gave their lives in America in, in war since World War One, and that's 
a pretty heavy piece of symbolism to take over for another cause. And I, so I am uneasy about, uh, uncomfortable about doing that. Um, I hope you get flags up all over town, but I'm not sure that that's the right place. Can I ask a question? Certainly. Um, so oh, I'm I, sorry, through the, through the chair. Thank you. Um, what I'd like to do first, Hope, yes, is go ahead and go through the rest of the Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I also support raising um, the flag in June. Um, I share Anne's concern about the Beach Street location because I, I thought there was a connection between the proclamation, which is for June, and the flag raising. And if the idea was to have flags in July along the beach. I'm, I'm, so I thought there was going to be a discussion on, on a flag policy at some point. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we've had that discussion. Mm -hmm. And I personally would rather have that discussion before we pick a new location mm -hmm. for uh, a flag. Uh, I'm totally fine with the, the one on the town hall, just like it was last year. Feel like there was some unfinished business on each flag placement. Brian? Uh, as Ian, I've uh, yes, the flagpole established that and done that. I'm reluctant, uh, actually more than reluctant. I just don't see anything other than the American flag on those the 19 there. It becomes uh once we open that door, okay, any other special interest is going to be looking to do something the same. And I just assume keep the flags where they are and represent something that's special to the town and leave it back. John? Yeah, no, I'm all in favor of the flag on the flagpole out front. We had a de debate on that, I guess, a couple of years mm -hmm. or so ago. And I think that's kind of settled at this, at this point. Yeah, the 19 flags, there is already a symbolism that's associated with the World War I veterans. And I think that that's, that's the way that focus should be. Uh, bringing that up as a topic uh, lends us to, or, or leads us to the fact that we probably need to broaden our flag discussion and policy going forward, because that really dealt with uh, flags in a public space in, in town halls in general. And now you're starting to say, well, what about other, other places in town? I don't think we had that on that flag discussion agenda. We will now. Okay, and and I agree as well. I think that um, the town hall is, uh, or the town flag is where we fly flags in addition to the American flag when we have proclamations of recognition. Um, I too am reluctant to go to other locations at this point in time. So I would like to add um, the flag policy as well to action items uh, and, and nail that one down. I know we've had a hiatus on policies, um, but something about the budget. <laughs> <laughs> Always and ever. Okay. Um, so with that said, we do seem all in agreement. Hope, what would you like to say? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And being a veteran, I, I very much, an active duty veteran, I very much appreciate that. Um, my question was, um, those flags seem to be flown from Memorial Day, which is understandable, all the way through to July. So I, I'm not sure what the commemoration is in July other than the 4th of July. So that was my point of clarification and why the ask was made, uh, because I certainly understand the meaning of the 19 uh, poles and the flags and respect them um, honestly and respectfully. Uh, but my question was the length of time in which they are flown, are they flown in commemoration of uh, that event for the Memorial Day period, or are they just flown, then continue to be flown just for the month of July for to celebrate 4th of July. And we're going to get that answer. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Well, yeah. if anything, I've heard a conversation. Yes, it is. It is. Yes. Absolutely. Can I just clarify though that we are at the town official flagpole 
absolutely the, the honor roll where my name is that's the flagpole yes absolutely and that, that won't change vis-a-vis -vis your policy amendments okay and now i'll let you oh oh, oh if i may absolutely among the things that gets discussed when we're talking about flags is the possibility of having a second flagpole on the honor and town common so i cannot we cannot promise that it will always be the current poll but, but for this it, year but for this year it will absolutely yes. be yeah. that poll. oh no i understand and and so we, we talked about that last year we right? did yeah. we okay. did and uh it's so that's something we can discuss as well i am very strongly in favor of one flagpole for our town but i am one person a five can i make so, a clarifying point um again being a, a veteran Will the uh, POW flag fly below? Will the United States flag fly above? Is the, um, the I think last year they had requested the, the Bruce Heisey and the American Legion had requested it. Um, so I think we do it the same way as we did last year mm -hmm. with the American POW. And the That's the order. Yep. Yeah. That's the typical order, although I've seen it fly, flown American. Uh, Progress. Flag and the POW flag, but mm -hmm. as a veteran, I prefer American POW and then the, the uh, progress yep. flag. Yep. I think so. So, Hope, thank you very much. Well, thank you both for bringing this. Oh, forward. yeah, we should, we should vote. vote. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I move, don't go anywhere. <laughs> I move that we raise the progress flag on the flagpole on um, the town common starting June 1st. And running for the whole month of June. Second. Moved by Ann Harrison, second by Kathy Bellotta. Roll call vote. Ann Harrison? Yes. Kathy Bellotta? Yes. Heinz Hollisey? Yes. John Round? Yes. And Becky Jakes says yes. It's unanimous. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you for the proclamation. Of the <laughs> and thank, thank you. you for your service. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you as well. Um, ladies, I'm just going to ask that if you have conversations, if you could just step outside because the the whispering can, can make it hard. No, it's A-OK, -okay, but it just does make it hard. Particularly for people at home. At home, exactly. That's mostly, yes. So, OK, a governance project update. We are ahead of schedule, so we will wait on that. And can we go to, um, how about, liaison updates um and i do have four actually board of health bike ped council on aging and harbor advisory however uh john round do you want to start well i mean the water thing will be coming up because yep. we're kind of out of order here a little bit but so that's the only thing that's really on the videos for me okay Brian, Parks and Rec, Library. Uh, uh, Parks and Rec. A uh, couple of things. Um, people just moving right along over at uh, Pine Street. And um, if there are times when you won't see any action going on. Every time they remove some dirt, they have to send it out to have it uh, tested. Oh, good to know. Um, and then, but the, the plan right now, the goal is to be complete by the end of June. That oh. sound? Yeah. Do you know how long the testing takes? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, I'm just curious. Okay. <laughs> but again, I think uh, those time frames were factored in when they gave us the, the, uh, the June 30th uh, target date. Um, as far as uh, the pickleball courts, that's still uh, a lot going on over there. Mm -hmm. There's still uh, some issues that was trying to resolve. The uh, uh, I know that uh, Cheryl is still looking into all kinds of uh, sound attenuation uh, products. Um, and uh, that's an ongoing process. There has been discussion as to actually setting actual, as, as opposed to uh, sundown, it's actually setting at time. Because my perception of sundown is someone else's different perception. Right. Okay. Yes. Yep. Uh, so I believe that the next meeting they're going to to vote on that and just set it eight to eight. Um, and that'll be down. And then finally, um, this and oh, okay. Yeah. 
and Deb, I don't know if this is appropriate. Uh, at the uh, right after the uh, the agenda came out on Thursday, and then the town hall was closed on Friday. Let's throw this out here. Members of Manchester Essex Little League have asked if they could put signage um, on the uh, the uh, fencing out at Sweeney Pine. I know that probably has to be a, a, a we have to do that on the agenda. To on to the agenda. But I told them that I would bring that up, and so hopefully we'll get down to the next month or next next meeting. Okay, so the, the, it's procedural, I guess, at this point. Okay, so the league signage goes on the next one. Thank you. Kathy Bellotta. Um, well, we're going to be discussing a lot of planning board activity tonight, so I think we'll cover most of it. The only thing I would mention is they did hold a public hearing on their proposed rules and, and regs that uh, Betsy Ware had um, drafted, mm -hmm. and that hearing has been continued until April 24th. Um, are you going to cover Council on Aging? John and I had attended the video board of directors meeting on that. You're going to cover yeah. that? Okay. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. that's good. Okay. Ann Harrison. Um, not much has happened on the school, you know, on the school front mm -hmm. um, since uh, we had several meetings. And, uh, I think they don't meet again until early May. This is the school school committee. Okay. So um, they're waiting to hear what Essex has to say. And Con Con is communicated with what are we so sure? And the 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 Con Con has been doing that I've been following, they've been doing nothing having to do with um policies they're just they're they're handling the cases um as expeditiously as possible under the circumstances and it seems like the committee that's doing its job quietly and happily mm -hmm. that's happy. good to hear <laughs> that's very good to hear okay <laughs> um then uh regarding uh board of health they're meeting this thursday evening i'll be attending that um, Council on Aging as the liaison there, and I was not able to make the other meeting, but John and Kathy went, and I do have notes from that. So they had a um, number of areas of concern. Probably the uh, biggest one is not letting the senior center fall by the wayside. Um, so I I would like to um, see if we can have an update or discuss that at the next meeting, which is going to be a nice long meeting. But um, I th I think we need to get back to that. It sort of took took a break while we were focusing on other things. So that's very foremost in uh, on their minds. Additionally, they also hope to be approved soon for the two vans, a 12 seater and nine seater, so they can get those ordered for use by late 23 or early 22. Um, June 14th is World Elder Abuse Day. And uh, at 10.30 to 11.30 on the Town Hall Green, there will be um, a rally. Um, just to, to raise awareness of that. Um, additionally, the annual appeal for the um, Friends of Council on Aging um, is in full swing 2023. As it stands now, they've raised a little over 17,000. So uh, if anybody wants somewhere to park some money, go ahead. And <laughs> reach out to the Friends of the Council on Aging. Um, Monday, they have their Coffee and Conversation Corners, which John has been attending. And that regular, regularly seems to bring 20 to 30 people, which is mm -hmm. really nice and uh, very much enjoyed. So that is COA. The other meeting, um, I did attend a bike ped meeting. Uh, and they have quite a heavy um, agenda. And 
there, I think one of the focuses is a new law the state has put in, which is a vulnerable users bill. And that's definitely going to come into play in terms of um, safe routes, um, accessing bike lanes um, and, and how bike ped, downtown improvement, DPW, um, the H Historic District Committee, there will be a lot of overlap on that. Um, next, Harbor Advisory. Harbor Advisory met and uh, they are focusing on getting cost estimates. They're looking at two for tax point at this time. And they're not sure yet if the rotunda will be usable or not this year. So they're, yeah, I know. Looking at that, um, grudging, we still need money for engineering and permitting on that. Um, the fisherman's facility is being looked at. Uh, and that's going to come in with rotunda estimates as well. Um, and they wanted to go ahead and finalize the Harbor Management Plan Group. They felt that the chair of Harbor Advisory Committee should be um, the chair, also the chair of the Harbor Management Plan. Uh, so there we go, those four. And that brings us to, I have a few more minutes. Um, can I ask a question? Yes. Yes. Okay. There, there, are, there are two rotunda projects, I believe. One is after the damage from the storm this yes. winter, which has the ramp, the, the mm -hmm. wooden part of the pier has lifted. So that's what may keep the rotunda unusable this. Right. Yes. And they're, so they're waiting for it. Now, the, the cost estimate for the fisherman's pier is that tied with the rotunda moving on, or or moving out, staying put, moving mm -hmm. ashore. Mm -hmm. So the the fishermen are waiting for the longer estimate, and the yes. rest of us are waiting. Yes, we're waiting. So that yellow thingy gets really tired. Okay. Understood. Um, something, a question that came up about the harbor management was whether that committee ought to include someone from the ACPA. That does make sense. Um, Bayan had suggested to me that, that someone contact the Yacht Club and ask if they would like to have their club captain involved in that, because they're certainly a heavy, heavy harbor user. I don't know how. That if, would happen. <clears throat> if we open that up to the yacht club, the boat club already has a member on board. But I'm thinking about um, the businesses as well. Well, we've been looking for businesses. Any thoughts? Well, actually, no, we'll put that on <clears throat> the agenda. That will have to go on the agenda for the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and of May 1 sound. <laughs> Should we go to May 15th on that one? Sure. Okay. So I'm sure it's a real uh, question. Has the group started, and I think you may have already answered this, have they started soliciting for uh, 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 the no, so I was waiting to, to set the harbor plan. Yeah. So that put this, we're losing another, another month as far as uh, okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Or it can be started. And if if it's felt that um, Manchester Yacht Club should have representation, they can join later, join in and get a, a catch up. Seems the okay. consultant would provide some input on that, right? Right. There, I mean, there can be different levels of participation. Mm -hmm. There is usually a core team, mm -hmm. and then there may be other interested parties which may want to participate in some sort of review process. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. That brings us back to governance project update. Hello, Susan. Hello. Um, how is this Who's driving the slides? Oh, you will <laughs> you like to sit, but I would say one thing we got out of the last meeting is um, if you could face the screen more than us, then you're more, uh, it's better, easier for our Zoom audience to hear. Sure. Well, I can see them, so you can do that. Okay, well, thank you very much for having me back. Um, this update really is tied to um, just quickly walking through what we've done over the last couple of months on our board and committee inventory. And as you can see, it's been pretty hefty, January, March, April, and now we're on the 18th. Um, we've done, we updated you initially on the select board in terms of what we were doing, um, planned a survey, had a department meetings and inventories, shared that information back with department heads and committee chairmen and chairwomen. Um, and now tonight is our select board update. So next slide. So far from the governance project, just again to put it in context, the master plan put forward a couple of alter, uh, a couple of goals for the master plan relative to the select board. And that's aligning the master plan implementation with committee board and all of the department work. As we know, we have a lot of committees and a lot of department people that work together. Sometimes they're siloed, sometimes they're integrated. The goal of this is to align them. And secondly, to really start fostering cohesion. We had a great example of that, just talking about the Harbor Committee and understanding who needs to be on what and with Parks and Rec and all those others, there's a lot of interconnection between these committees, so we want to be able to foster that. So far, um, we have shared the results, as I said, with the board and departments who are here tonight. The goal tonight is to prioritize next steps. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is just a visual of where we stand right now relative to this. So again, um, the thing that was really important, and I think that I was interested in the common themes, as you'll see in a minute, are very consistent between the board's committees and the department heads, which is actually encouraging, I think, because we want to make sure that we're clear on that. And you'll see as the recommendations come forward, the implementation is short in the short, medium, and long-term piece. Okay. So the board and committee feedback really came around these sort of top four or five pieces. Communication improvements are really important. We talked a little bit right before this meeting started uh, where I came up around the publishing of the liaison list, the importance of understanding who is doing the liaison work, what they're doing, what are the roles and responsibilities around that. Boards and departments don't necessarily know what each other's liaisons are doing. So the construct is, let's get that published, let's make it understood, and now we can make that work. Um, there's also um, updating board and committee handbooks that are done every year. They're really, really good. Some boards and committees didn't realize that they were available. So that's one of the things that we need to make sure that people get the training on those documents. Um, I think the most important piece here is the contract around Boards and committees do a lot of work. Um, they work sometimes insular in the stuff that they need to do, but they also put forward a lot of good work that is not necessarily connected to departments or connected to the work of the master plan or to the things that we need to do. The goal here is to try to understand how to move work forward. So if you have a parking study, you have that put forward, how do you bring that to back to the select board and how does it get implemented? How is that done through a different la different layers of work so that people can actually connect the work that they're doing to getting some results implemented? Um, and then just the basic idea of additional uh, meetings with committee chairs and communication and all of that. There's also was some good discussion around uh, committee structure. <laughs> you know, can we do more with working groups? Are there other things that can be done relative to that? And to really understand if we had a resource group or a project team, are there opportunities for that? We run into open meeting law and have to understand those pieces of it, but are there ways that we can look at that? Um, hybrid meetings, we need to make sure that everyone is trained on doing these meetings well. And the website, which is probably the last large piece of this, which also ties into technology. 
making it easier for people to fill out applications, but also to navigate and get the information that they need. Um, there were a couple specific uh, wish lists in terms of inspections for real estate transfers, building department staff, expending those along. And um, starting the budget process earlier, which I think you began kicking off last week, which was actually great in the look back going forward. So those are some of the feedback that we heard from the departments in the chair. Okay. Recommendations. So these really fall into the three categories of short, medium, and long term. Over the next 30 days, recommending setting an annual date for department board and committee meetings to review their work of the year past, look forward for setting goals and priorities for the next fiscal year, starting in June. So the thought process would be each June, there'd be a one man meeting where all the committee chairs, department heads, and people get together in the boards and come up with, here's the stuff that we're all working on. So there's a connection on that. Um, make sure that there are updates quarterly from each of the boards and committees so that we know how things are going over the year. It's great mm -hmm. to set goals and go forward with them, but if you're not checking in to understand what they look like, it doesn't necessarily make sense. Um, taking the liaison program to another level, which is really formalizing it a little bit in terms of what committees get liaisons. This isn't meant to be more work, but the construct is, is that they will be consistent. Mm -hmm. When you attend a liaison and you're a liaison for meeting, here's the basic things you report out on, here's the way it works, the way you need to do it. And then finally, a um, annual volunteer appreciation event was something that we suggested in the beginning of June. So those are sort of the short-term pieces that we have. Yeah, just one thing, um, we kind of skipped the road with the discussion on the minutes. Oh, sorry, <laughs> probably on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we did bring it. Right. <laughs> we did. Well, you know, it's funny because we had a very long discussion about the minutes. So there was, you know, the concept is, is that if you can do minutes early and get them up and running, people would really appreciate that. So when we presented this to the boards and committees, their concern was five days is a short period of time. Is it something, do we wanna put draft minutes up? How do we wanna look at that? And I think we're talking about the prospect of how that may be able to work in a different way. So taking a summary of action minutes at the front of a meeting and just taking an annotated version of the agenda to say, here's the topics we discussed, not necessarily sharing outcomes, but at least knowing what's been on the meeting and what was voted on, and then going and following up with meetings going forward. Yeah, so we actually have, um, so I think the next step there is we need to come to, um, to clearly outline what the options are around minutes, because it doesn't do us any good if minutes aren't posted for months, you know, the residents don't know what's going on. And in doing our research, we came upon some language in the open meeting law FAQs, which was very interesting that committees could choose the method, they could vote on how they approve the minutes. So for example, some committees could vote to have the um, chair approve the minutes. Um, and you know that's certainly probably not something you wanna do for an elected board, but for many of our advisory mm -hmm. committees, which are less formal, that might be just changing how they approve the minutes might allow them to get more posted, uh, more posted faster. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the different options. And Diane is all over this. She's very concerned about, you know, how the process we use for, for posting minutes. And so um, she's doing a little research for us. Yeah. I'm also just going to say if anybody's phone is not muted, if you would mute it, please. That would be helpful if you can bring in. Okay, thanks for the reminder on the minutes. Yes. Okay. So um, the, the next midterm focus is really now saying, um, looking at all the committees that we've got, um, there are a lot of them out there. Is there an opportunity to retire some? Is there an opportunity to basically consolidate some? That could be a possibility for the next 60 or 90 days. Um, implement department committee board liaison program. So actually take the program and implement it over the next month or so. Um, clarify the process for creating task force. If we're doing anything different on committees, just being clear about that. Um, how do we do committee project work? What is the process for that? You know, we talked about gating process where you identify a project, you take it to the board, you get their approval, you move forward, and it's got different levels of focus on it as you go ahead. Um, inner board committee department workflow and communication process, how these work between committees is important. 
um, and then making sure that all the members have the handbooks. And then finally, updating the website. So there's some pieces that can be done just general cleaning up, removing inactive activity um, committees that are on there now, but also making sure that membership and all that information is correct and focused on. So those are sort of the midterm pieces. All right, and the last one. Um, this constructive gating process for projects by advisory committees. So then you basically have an opportunity to really work through how the different workflow will happen and what the steps are along the way to approve the projects. Uh, integrate and streamline permitting process online. There's opportunities. Our building process is pretty solid online right now, but are there other things that's wrapped around that that we can solidify a little bit better? Um, integrate a public safety strategy. We talked about this before town meeting and, and some of the earlier recommendations that we had, which is basically taking a look and saying, you know, the world is changing. How do we look at fire, police, harbor? What do we need to do around those things? Um, and then finally, um, looking at succession planning, which is important for all departments. And then technology use review and website update, a real hardcore look at that. Because I think one of the topics that came up, particularly around minutes, are there ways of using technology that might actually help us um, get minutes out quicker and have things be a little bit more cohesive and coming forward. So that's sort of the mid, long, and term and long-term goals, the recommendations that we had. So the last piece is just to say, what do you think of those groups? What are the next steps? What are the priorities? What are you thinking about? Thank you very much, Senator. This is um, a lot of work. <laughs> And I would love to be able to see how something along these guide, these lines can actually be implemented in such a way that it's not reinvented every year. Um, comments or questions, Anne? Um, we talked a lot about liaison and um, should the planning board, for instance, have a liaison to the board of health? Um, and how are you going to, that means that everybody is going to be in a meeting every day, mm -hmm. sometimes two or three at the same time. And that's the reason why we're taking the time to look at this and to say what really makes sense. The construct isn't necessarily to say everybody gets a liaison. What we need to understand is how the different levels work. So planning board has a very strong connection with the public department of uh, health, you know, how that works. So I think the answer short term is we don't know yet. And we need to look at that and make sure that we allocate the right liaisons to the right groups. So for example, one of the pieces of information we collected from all the boards and committees is who do you interact with? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we can see DPW is a real popular group. So mm -hmm. we don't want them in every single meeting. We have to think of another way for them to get their information out and for the, have the right dialogue where they're not in 20 meetings every week, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then it's very interesting. We're, we're doing some cross-checking where one board said, oh, we need information from so-and-so, but that other board did not say they needed information <laughs> from group one. So we're doing that cross-checking right now. <clears throat> but it, the, I think the intent is to have deliberate liaisons where they will help move work forward mm -hmm. or help communication, but everybody can't be a liaison to everybody else. So, and in addition to that, though, what's what um, along those lines, it's not just the lia liaisons or other groups who are drawing time away from other departments. Right. When you get when you talk about myriad emails every day, that's another draw on that department's time. And I'm sorry, what did you want to say? Um, the the second thing that I see among our boards and committees is that there are some that are land use, some that have judiciary, quasi-judiciary authority. Mm -hmm. And as we're setting up, for example, processes for minutes, I think we need to distinguish between those who are purely advisory and those who have the ability to affect people's property. Absolutely. Oh, and that was that came up very strongly in our conversation that if you have a judiciary responsibility or anything like that, that those minutes need to be not necessarily summary, they need to be very specific. So yeah. And, there's and, gonna be two levels. 
I think I want to be clear that when you're talking about the minutes for, um, say, the Winthrop Field Committee, mm -hmm. that they could have an agenda and then just notes on what votes were taken, mm -hmm. um, that, that they don't need to lay the whole discussion of everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I maybe I just misheard you. I thought I thought you said you didn't necessarily have to keep track of the decisions. You have to keep track of the track Absolutely. of the decisions. Yeah, yeah. I was talking about if you were doing a summary piece up front um, ah. to get draft minutes put together, that was one of the options that we talked about was doing an action summary of a meeting after mm -hmm. the fact. Mm -hmm. Um, but after talking with Diane and everyone else, the thought is that we probably don't want to do that. We're going to look at it a little differently. But I think to your point, there's levels of committees that have different needs for minutes in terms of specificity and the need to put that forward. So that's part of this untangling is to figure out what we need to do. With and, and once and once we all agree on if there are any changes needed, right, to how we do the minutes. And I think the next step is also to hold the chairs accountable for getting the minutes published in a timely manner. Right because we do have some groups which don't do it for months and months. Some have never published minutes. Mm -hmm. So um, we're doing a little investigation, you know, calling up the chairs. Um, what's what's the problem here? And um, at some point we may need to make a decision either, you know, that committee doesn't need to exist or perhaps it needs a different chair. But if you're gonna have a, a committee that's representing the residents, the residents have a right to know what's going on, so. And to that point, yeah. yeah. Uh, zoning board need the minutes to write a decision. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think I'm, 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 I'll be getting a phone call. Where, where's my decision? I'm gonna get the minutes here. Mm -hmm. you know, and that becomes an integral component of the uh, the actual decision that's being written. So mm -hmm. it's certainly better. And in addition to those, but what when we're looking at these um, suggestions, we also have to bear in mind what master in the law is. And so with that, regarding minutes, and it's important that we not impose mm -hmm. levels of specificity because that is not in accordance with master and law and how minutes are, well, at least according to the attorney general, that, that how, um, how minutes are. Mm -hmm. What is the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Say it again. We don't know. I know. Well, you're supposed to know these things. No, no how it's, minutes it's, it's are, are it's, a, it's a complex noted. law, and, and I'll tell you when I yeah. when I had a conversation with Diane about it, she learned a few new things too, which was mm -hmm. interesting. Um, so that's why I think we all have some habits. I'll say it that way around minutes, and some of our habits they're not necessarily the only way to legally, you know, comply with the OML. And that's what's interesting. If we can find a more efficient, faster mm -hmm. way to get the information out to the residents, that that's usually good for everybody. So Diane's doing a little research and then good. we're waiting for her to come back to us and, and just clarify some of the new information we found. Um, and I didn't mean to take us down the minutes rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's a big topic. It, it, it's it, very big. It it's time consuming. Is. It's time consuming, but they're important. And a lot of people do not understand it. Right. And, as, you know, and it can change when yeah. you think you do. Don? Yeah, so I, I want to go back to the liaison issue mm -hmm. a little bit. And I saw the grid that uh, you put together with regard to which committees intersect which, with, uh, which other committees. And I agree that if all people went to all meetings associated with their liaison responsibilities, uh, everything would grind to a halt. It, it just could not happen. Right. I think there are maybe a few committees where you need to be at some of, if you're a liaison, you need to be at more rather than fewer, but there are some a couple of times a year is enough. And I, I, you know, I would point the first finger at us. We're the only ones that intersect with every committee and we've got assignments for what, maybe eight or 10 out of 30. So, so exa and an example of that might be though, that if I'm the, let's say if I'm the liaison to Mike and Ted or at right. 14, one of the things I think that would be important would be for me to work with that committee to make sure their goals are aligned with what we need them to do as a select board, right? Their, their, their advisory, and if they're going off on their own thing, right, 
don't we want some cooperation? Yeah, but I don't think that's up no. to the liaison. That's, no, no, no. The, the liaison should represent the board. But if we sense that the committees are and going doing something else, okay. I think the liaison gets information right. from meetings to bring back to the select yep. board. To then, if modifications need to be made or statements need to be made, yes, it's discussed I agree within with that. the group before yep. going back. I, I, agree I with think that. that's really critical. Well, I think that can tie into the minutes. There are some some groups, maybe you want to be there every other meeting, right. every fourth or fifth meeting. If the minutes are there, you can look and say, oh, there's something going on here. I think I better go to the next meeting because, uh, you know, I'm interested in, in updating exactly what's uh, what's happening here. So, but I think that we have to broaden our horizons here with regard to liaison responsibilities across the board. And uh, then, then see how that evolves in terms of um, uh, the number of meetings yeah. that one has to go to. It will increase, but it should not have to increase very much. Susan, so I think if you go back to the short-term slide, Greg, real quick, the one way to begin to attack this is looking at the construct of doing this annual multi-departmental mm -hmm. board committee meeting. Mm -hmm. If you imagine that every June you get together and set those yeah. goals, right. Right. and every quarter you update what those yeah. goals are, the need for the liaisons, other than on a very important, you know, tactical piece that you need to stay involved with, you know, like the zoning board issue, is right. very different, and that will be covered yes. by the process that we're trying to put forward here. So, right, <clears throat> I think that's the goal to get to that. Because some liaisons can simply be you reach out to a chair or whomever's the note taker and say. Give, give me the synopsis. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> what we found was really helpful. Getting everybody in the room is great. When you have the departments yeah. with the committees, with the boards, <clears throat> everybody's sharing their ideas. You really can find the common ground and what works best. So that's why I think having this multi-board meeting in June, it would be a good kickoff to start this. We can come forward with some ideas about and constructs that they can talk about. Um, and come prepared with their goals and how they could put those forward, and then everybody can hear what's going on. They and asked for that. That, that was that. That was very. I think it's great. Yeah. And I, I love the idea also of the liaison program. I think that's that can be a critical component. So um, should we set this meeting up? Try to get this set up. Well, so we're not taking uh, the the quite the point is is that from the short term first thirty days that's what I'm looking at are these the topics that you would like to cover? If they are the topics that you'd like to cover, I can put forward the next round of discussion on this, which would be agenda for the meeting, how would it be set up, the time frame, the kinds of topics. I think the liaison program will be developed as part of that meeting because we want to share the thoughts with everybody. So the implementation wouldn't necessarily happen until after that meeting, but we want to get the feedback for people on that. So that's the general thought. Okay, um, I did have, what was the percent, do you, do you have an idea of percentage of involvement from boards and committees with uh, the, the meetings you had and then the uh, surveys? Oh, how many, we had, um, how many responses we had? Oh, we got everyone's. We got everyone's. Yeah, yeah everyone's. A little yeah. bit of chasing, but not yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a little bit of chasing. From no, every responses. board and committee. This response is on, yeah, from the yeah. survey. Now, committee. there are some, there are some committees mentioned on our website, which actually don't exist. So that's part so of our cleanup. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that is part of our... Uh, an easy just go do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, there are some things that need to be cleaned up. And we did have, you know, our initial meeting, there were a lot of people that couldn't get there to the first one, mm -hmm. but in the follow-up conversations, everybody was very interested in getting together in June, as long as we can give an advance date, and we yeah. know when it is, and that's what's really important, It's getting that done, so. So we what, had good participation. Yeah. <laughs> one meeting, the meeting I was able to attend, I really wondered, that was great. Yeah. I would think the, uh, the other thing that was interesting was when we did um, send the survey out, you know, there, like I said, there were some committee chairs who voluntarily came forth and said, you know, I'm not sure I need to, our team needs to be a committee. There may be another construct that's better. 
So um, we didn't want to get into a specific discussion on which committees um, uh, we may want to retire or reshape or uh, refocus, but we're going back to those committee chairs and talking with them each individually um, to see if we can come forth with a more specific recommendation. But there are also some committees which have significant vacancies. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think those are, um, we just haven't connect, directly connected with those chairs yet. So I didn't want to get into that discussion here. We want to talk to those people first. But there's probably a good half dozen in, in various shapes that we can retire, reshape, right. or refocus. Because there is a good deal of overlap as well. And a right. lot of sort of repetitive reinventing because right. there is so much overlap. And if we can agree on what a, um, what a committee should be, um, you know, I would say one thought is that you know, we have town employees who get the job done and committees, the non-elected boards, you know, they are designed to augment, right, mm -hmm. what and advise us, uh, but they're designed to augment the town you know, employees. Um, I would say that as we, we, we've created a lot of new task forces and stuff like that, just since I've been on, on the board and we may want to, um, think about naming conventions, which are a little bit clearer on when committees, um, like for example, lately we've been <clears throat> setting up task forces for defined projects, which are gonna end, right? There are some legacy committees, which were originally set up as defined mm -hmm. projects, but they're ongoing and have not yet retired. So those are the, the ones we're looking at first, because in if we rolled back the clock and started them, they probably would have been a task force, mm -hmm. which by now should have been retired. So um, just some of those items are coming up as well. I, I'm, I'm a little worried, a little uneasy about this very top-down organization of everybody should be working on what the Board of Selectmen says they should be working on. I think, and I, that's not far from, because I think that there are a number of committees that come up with useful suggestions, ideas, projects that we hadn't thought about. Oh, great. And, and, and I would hate to have us lay out a schedule for the committee for the year, you will work on this. And and lose. I don't the, think that's what. Well, yeah, well, that's being, not what I meant to say. Let me, yeah, let me that, clarify. Being, the discussion we had with the committees was um, they recognize that they are working in silos in some cases mm -hmm. and don't really want to. They they know there's overlap, but if there is no communication around the goals and specifically timing, it's really hard to share information and get work done collectively if there are no stated goals and no stated timing on when people want to achieve those goals. So um, my so that that's step number one. It really is the communication, outlining you know, the goals that they come up with, okay, with their timing. But we may need to get in there uh, because the their wishful timing may not be aligned with the timing that we have set up as a board for other things in the town. Or it's just, it's not that we're trying to dictate, but there's coordination. Um, I just, it feels like chaos if well, everybody's off doing their own thing. I think, I think the yeah. challenge here is, if you took everything here that we have put forward and all the great ideas and said, okay, we're gonna just, you know, spin the dice and this thing's gonna happen. Change is hard. Moving things is difficult. You need collaboration. You need everybody to work together to come up with the right answers. Mm -hmm. So the whole intent here is to start with communication mm -hmm. and to begin having intercommittee meetings so that we can sit down and have, because the ideas that we're coming up with could be completely off counter to what other people might find and we'll find a better answer. So I think it needs to be iterative. It needs to be collaborative and we need to bring everybody together to solve this. It's not top down or bottom up necessarily. It's coming together and figuring it out because people on committees right. have their, the reason that they're on a committee, particularly advisory is because they have a passion and you want to capture that. That's mm -hmm. the stuff you want to keep alive, you know, in the town and doing. So mm -hmm. I think it is not meant to be 
dictatorial. It's not meant to be, you know, subscription of the way you do things, but more how we get people together and talk about things, because I think that's where we'll find the answer. And of course, the school committee is entirely outside of all of this. <laughs> No, 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 <laughs> no, but, but it's an no, elected I, board. Yeah, but I, I heard what you heard uh, earlier, so you got to get that clarification. Yeah. Okay, so it's now 8.45, 7.45, and um, what would you like? Well, just consensus that, you know, yeah, this sounds <clears throat> right. If there's anything else that you want uh just go beyond in terms of what we presented. If not, I will take those first four or five goals for the next 30 days and frame them up a little bit. Um, suggest an agenda for a June meeting for the interdepartmental teams and the um, boards and committees. Do you have any feeling for when that meeting might be? I, well, we have to see what, what people ask people when it'll be available, when they're available. So I'm hoping mid-June before school ends. Um. Okay. Um, sounds like a pretty big meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are we going to have it? Well, that's all the stuff we have to figure out. So give me a week. <laughs> yeah. So, and we'll we'll look at the details. Yeah. And, and you want people who are you want the employees, the department, department employees, department, department heads, heads, department heads, committee chairs, chairs, and lots of people who are on volunteer committees have full-time jobs as well. Well, this, this is meant to be a chair and department head meeting. It's right. not the Yes, I had, but right. even department, even chairs mm -hmm. have. Oh, I understand. So, well, and that's why we have to double check and see what we can do. Okay. But the indication from everybody that responded, they were very interested in doing it. So I think mm -hmm. it's a priority. Um, yeah. Maybe finding a piece of software that would let people signal what dates you can do a doodle. Yeah. doodle. doodle. Yes. Yeah. Do a doodle. <laughs> That's what I was like. Yeah. Oh. So we can do a doodle. Okay, so does that sound good? It sounds good. The one thing that I'm really concerned with going forward is that, um, especially in terms of communication and flow, is just making sure there that we are not violating any OML or anything. And I know that would be first and foremost mm -hmm. as well, but I just, every step that we do, um, I wanna make sure that we're so rigidly adhering to that. Mm -hmm. So I guess, Becky, you're our representative to this. Yeah. <laughs> Happily. So anyway, okay. Thanks. Thank you, Susan, Thank you. very much. That was good information. A lot, yes. Good information. <laughs> okay. Um, Rick, if you would like to offer something, I would love to have you go ahead and send an email on that. This is just a meal that we're not doing public comment on that right now. Um, okay. Next up, we have Water Resource Protection Task Force. And just a reminder, any side conversations, do take those outside, Rick, because if you all are chatting, then the people who are attending via Zoom can't really hear very well. Okay. Uh, Greg? Steve there? I texted them about five or six minutes ago. <clears throat> I was on the same meeting with uh, Steve, so he should be following sure. right here. Okay, I see Bion, we've got Bion, Chuck, and Steve. Good evening, Steve. You're muted. Unmute. Ah. Uh, Greg, Steve says he can't unmute. And Susan, as a co-host, he should be able to unmute. Yeah. Um, 
Bayon, are you able to? Oh, Chuck did. Yep, Bayon okay. can unmute. I can unmute. Okay, Steve, I'm not sure because other people are able to. Are you on, are you on a, he's not on a phone. Yes, I have them log off and log back in. Yeah. Did you hear that, Steve? Try to log off and log back in, please. There you go. Okay. Uh -huh. There we go. Sorry about that. Evening. Good evening. Sorry to be a little late and to be fumbling fingers here. All right. Are you, um, do you need to share your screen, Steve? Yes, I do. Hang on one second. I will get to that right here. Sorry, still uh, fiddling with this. There we go. <clears throat> with any luck, you uh, you see the title page. Yes, yep, you got it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so as you know. It, since early last year, the task force has been uh, working pretty diligently, I would say, in uh, six subcommittees focused on different aspects of uh, a long-term strategy for water quantity and quality for drinking water. And I think we've covered a lot of ground. We've had uh, fully 20 members and alternates um, at least a uh, majority attending every meeting, or meeting every three weeks. So I've been very pleased with the outpouring of energy, particularly that there's some folks associated with the task force who, I, as far as I know, have not been involved much with in other volunteer capacities. Anyway, I'm very grateful to them and, and uh, thank you for making all of this possible. One of the primary things we uh, we set out to do was to figure out how to make something that would uh, would last in terms of uh, recommendations that you accept and endorse and want to see implemented um, and not simply a you know another really solid report that everyone agrees with that ends up you know in a short-term initiative or a, a, a privileged place on the bookshelf so our first recommendation is is uh, exactly along those lines. And it is to create a water advisory board. You're welcome to change the name. I borrowed this from the town of Belmont, which similar to us, um, created a board in the absence of uh, separate water and sewer commissioners to be responsible and accountable within town government preser for preserving quality and quantity of the drinking water. Uh, again, modeling on Belmont you know, to keep it small, three volunteers, to ensure implementation of things we recommend and you approve. 
we considered two options here. Um, one was to have a small water advisory board appointed by you with staggered three-year terms, um, a small budget and some part-time staff support. And option B would be to delegate to an existing committee and we did a experiment to see if this could go to, for instance, sustainability committee, which already has officially responsibility for water conservation, although as they say, they, they've uh, focused primarily on other aspects of sustainability in their work so far. And we concluded that it's important enough and uh, time consuming enough that not only should it not be something that you have sole responsibility for as select board, but it should be something that has a group of people dedicated and focused to. So that's the, that's the primary recommendation in process terms and governance terms. And I realize it, it needs to fit into the framework that you're working on with uh, Susan Beckman and others uh, to, to uh, clarify and make town government more efficient. The, the other recommendations, and, and I'm happy to have some discussion about that now, although I can also just blurt out these other recommendations and uh, let you chew on the whole matter and ask questions. The other recommendations are substantive and they fall under the headings of conserving drinking water, which comes from our study of demand and usage, uh, ensuring ample drinking water, which comes from supply and source studies and improving quality of drinking of the drinking water overall, which comes from a variety of work, particularly the contamination and water quality team. There's three primary recommendations under each. Uh, we would not the Water Advisory Board wouldn't take sole responsibility for any of these or most of these, uh, would for some actually, uh, but would, would be a, uh, um, a help, an assistance, uh, uh, kind of hub for information and a, a conscience for keeping the process moving forward. So these nine are under conservation to first upgrade uh, and in most cases replace our existing water meters for residential and commercial and other customers. Uh, second, to change the water rates uh, with conservation in mind. And obviously we have specific recommendations for each of these, um, which I'd be happy to go into when we have more time. Uh, third would be to increase awareness and education around conservation and two and three Actually, one, two, and three work together nicely in uh, as a hat trick to uh, apply better information, a set of carrots and sticks, if you will, to the idea that we should not be using so much drinking water to irrigate uh, lawns and plants, um, which is one of our findings. Under ensuring supply, uh, the three recommendations are to help define the alternative next steps for the Lincoln Street well, which as I'm sure you're aware include um, remediating the contamination, PFAS contamination on site at the, the well, or uh, conveying the water somehow up to uh, the water treatment plant and centralizing PFAS filtration up there. A third kind of dark horse candidate would be to uh, plan for retirement of Lincoln Street well, um, if it is possible and uh, to replace it with a cleaner source of water closer to the existing water treatment plant. Uh, fifth would be to accelerate the replacement of our ancient water mains, uh, which you probably know as much about as we do, um, but to help build the financial case for that, particularly if, uh, the Water Enterprise Fund is, uh, shall we say, more liquid after uh, recommendation two. Six would be to expedite repairs to the wastewater treatment plant's recycled water system, given Chuck's uh, astounding, kind of stunning finding that um, we are using last year fully 10% of our finished water um, in that process. Mm -hmm. Normally, we ask every citizen to process the water somehow or other before it goes to the wastewater treatment plant and then out to sea. But in this case, we're cutting out all the middlemen and uh, using the water directly at the treatment plant before it's sent out to sea. 
under C, the quality, uh, and you'll see, of course, there are some overlaps here. The Lincoln Street well, for instance, is both a quality and a quantity issue, as are the water mains, which are the ancient ones are full of tuberculated. It's not a wonderful word. It's my new favorite word, tuberculated uh, uh, accumulations of uh, minerals, which uh, then leach back into the water. Anyway, under C would be monitoring wells for gravelly pond, which are already specced and, and budgeted um, and ready to go, sort of. Um, eight is to update our uh, existing source water protections, uh, which can be primarily, I think, the overlay districts and zoning, although it's intimately connected with number nine, which is to start serious dialogue on watershed protection with Hamilton, Essex, and Wenham given that we basically share the same North Coastal Basin uh, in some respects. And uh, our watershed in particular is very much uh, in their hands in terms of source water protection, since most of the uh, watershed is, is in, in their towns. So I, I also included um, a little bit of detail on each of these, which I'll leave you to uh, read or ask about on your own. And let me just conclude by saying we're doing a bunch of work to make as specific as possible the steps and the timing and the budget implications of these recommendations. So this is just a, a very high level, 10,000 foot view of what it might look like. What, what step would we take first under each of those nine recommendations? How soon should we start? How long will it take really to execute in some meaningful way the, the recommendation and what might it cost. The costs are in there in red if they're uh, expenses and in black in the case of rates where we expect there to be some, uh, some improvement in uh, cash flow into the water enterprise fund. So for example, for meters, we have uh, been working with Chuck and various vendors to spec out a pilot test which could start in 60 days of you know, a dozen or two dozen households to try out new meters um, and from that to make a decision about uh, how quickly and which technology uh, to use. So within two years, we would have replacement at a cost uh, at or under $1 million, et cetera, down that list. Well, I, you, you gave me 15 minutes and I, I uh, don't want to abuse that. So I'm gonna stop here and invite your questions and uh, comments. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, and um, one more time to that. No, I'm, I'm apparently printed out the wrong thing. Was this report? <laughs> we got a re another. This is revised. We had a revised yeah. one this afternoon. Yes. They're, they're the um, one that begins corrected. It, it was very. Let, let, let me whine a little bit okay. about getting stuff that's this dense at in the middle of the afternoon. I was at the dentist in the middle of the <laughs> afternoon. Um, you know. I'm truly sorry. Well, the good news is we're not asking you to make a decision tonight. Although any but, feedback you have over the next few weeks about priorities among these things, about feasibility or fantasy of some of the financial implications, all of that would be helpful to the task force. Thank you. It, it is a lot to digest, um, but I would like to go along and Kathy. Yeah, um, so very comprehensive. So thank you very much for that. Um, I share Ian's frustration with uh, getting the density of the report at, at uh, the 11th hour. Um, but I, I just, I guess I have a question. Um, because it is very comprehensive. And it would seem to me, Greg, um, a lot of what's here is under the purview of the DPW, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So given that, um, when I go back to the first recommendation on whether or not we need to create a water advisory board or not. I guess 
my inclination is that, you know, based on my previous comment, committees are needed to fill gaps, right, in, in town governance. And if most of this is under the DPW, I'm wondering what very narrow specific purpose some sort of committee would address. Um, I agree that um, you know, the sustainability committee might be a great committee to take on the education component, conservation. I think that's right up their alley. Um, but other than that, I, I, I'm just not mm -hmm. clear on anything on the list of implementation ideas that Chuck couldn't handle. Well, Chuck. I, I mean, Chuck should answer this, but from yeah, my standpoint, so Chuck, if you're on, I, you know, so yeah, that would be my question. Just, you know, just I, a I quick, a quick answer, Kathy, to an excellent question. Uh, numbers one, four, five, and six are clearly primarily DPW's responsibility, mm -hmm. and we are simply proposing to do whatever we can to help out with the water water meter pilot, for example, or fleshing out the the longer term consequences of the alternatives to the Lincoln Street well. Okay. Two, three, seven, eight, and nine. So five of the nine are not um, in any way, shape, or form within uh, the normal work week or work month, <clears throat> as far as we know of DPW. So if, if oh, they get done and, at all, I didn't hear. two and three, just two and three. Two, well, two, two three, three, seven, seven eight. 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 Two, three, seven, eight, and nine. I'm, I'm going to jump in here, Steve. Oh, that, um, that was my question. I What's do, the DPW responsibility versus not? Yeah, and I, I do want to hear from Chuck. I need to be keeping an eye on timing here, but so I'd like to hear from the rest of the um, board members. Brian? Well, I have to agree with Kathy if you know how much that bothers me. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> no, I just think that we have a resource with, with Chuck, and I'd like to. Uh, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. And you know how I feel also about trying to cut back on government as opposed to expanding it. Because, um, we're all we're best when we surround ourselves with the people that know what they're talking about. And I'd like to, you know, I'm, I'm going to take Chuck's lead on this. John? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm on the task force, so I'm pretty close to this. And numbers two and three are really the key ones for this task force. The amount of information, the trove of information we're going to get from these meters is going to be overwhelming. And we can manage uh, consumption and conservation and programs to a very great extent with all of that information. I mean, to a point where we can't really even imagine exactly what we do with it, but we will get a great deal of it out of there. And we need somebody to look at that data as to how usage is going, who's doing what and where. It's really dealing with the soft, the, the information the software provides and then coming up with programs that might educate or otherwise uh, promote conservation. And that's only going to become increasingly important. Yeah, and, and that is the that is the primary yeah. role that these three people would be involved with. I, I agree 100%, yeah. one, four, five, and six, Chuck is running with that pretty much 100%. Okay, um, and having, having <laughs> quiet. Um, I see seven as being distinctly in, in Chuck's area. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, the handling the numbers, we, the, 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 this is really in the bailiwick of the sustainability committee is conservation. Um, um, and it, whatever information we have about needing more zoning overlay in Manchester is something that um, we need to push to the planning board. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to have three people who aren't the planning board mm -hmm. doing zoning. Mm -hmm. And the dialogue um, with Hamilton, Essex and Wenham, I think falls in our laps. I don't, I just don't see him, the, uh, we can perhaps other pe people, sustainability committee, for example, might be able to make a connection, but in terms of talking with towns about, our neighboring towns about changing their zoning laws, that's something that pretty much has to happen at the select board or at the administrator level. 
in my opinion. And uh, so basically what I'm hearing is we want to expand the mandate of sustainability committee. Or reshape. Mm -hmm. or reshape. Mm -hmm. or reshape. And refocus and, or reshape. Add to their. Yeah. And that's not to say that some of the people on this task force would be these people. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're expecting to be the, some, some, some of those people to be among them. And so maybe it becomes a subgroup within sustainability or something like that. That's, one question I had about your comment, John, around the data analysis on number two. So the water rates, um, we don't do that. I mean, we approve the water rates based on information provided to mm -hmm. us. I'm presuming there's some data analysis that goes on already. So I'm just not clear on that's that's for why don't we need it. Um, I, I want to wrap this up okay. and, and, and then come back to it okay. because yes, it's very important. Um, but I wanna hear from Chuck and um, your take on this information. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? So sure can. Yeah, um, so, you know, we've been working with uh, Steve and the rest of the task force for the past over a year. And so, uh, you know, th these, recommendations that they were going to put in this report uh, and you know that Steve discussed tonight is not any sort of surprise to me I you know I do feel like we've been able to give input um, you know I do think and sorry I didn't get to tune in I was actually with Steve on CONCOM before this but uh, so I didn't get to see Sue Beckman's uh, presentation uh, but you know I, I do think it's hard for me to commit to a, you know another um, you know another group or you know committee to oversee just this because I do feel like, you know, we do do a lot of it, but that's not to say that, you know, like uh, I think Kathy's question about, uh, you know, the water rates for conservation and stuff like that. I mean, that's, that's well beyond anything that, you know, I would have to pay a consultant to get there. And I think actually, you know, one of the good things out of this uh, task force was, you know, the ability of some of the townspeople to contribute in, in a way like this, uh, both Steve, John, and a couple others on the committee, especially with respect to those, uh, you know, uh, conservation rates. So it, it's a it's a tough one. Um, you know, I like I said, I'm not looking for another committee, uh, but you know, there there are some things and I think that where this came out of was people's um, you know interest in the topic of water. So that's that's a good thing in my opinion. Uh, but also um, yeah and you know, where do we go after this? Um, it's hard it's hard for me to say. So I guess uh, I'll have to think about it a little bit. Um, but um, yeah and uh, yeah, I guess I don't want to go, you know, item by item, but so yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's a good list. A lot of these things we're already doing. So I, I agree that, you know, it, it's good for me, I think, to have a report and have the, you know, public backing on some of these things, certainly, you know, water meter replacements and conservation rates are definitely something that I'm going to need, you know, town support for. And, you know, I, you know, an, an extension of that is the select board, I think will, will need that uh, support. So you know, that, that's all a good thing, but yeah, it is stuff that is kind of already on my radar or stuff that we're already doing, but so can kind of go both ways with it on that one. Um, but uh, any specific questions, I guess, I, that's kind of my uh, thought process right now, I guess. Okay, I, I, I think that we all need to spend a little time um, looking over this um, and and this huge amount of work that has um, gone into the presentation this evening um, by the Water Resource Protection Task Force and all the people. Um, I think we're very grateful for all the work. And um, I, I, do, I do think that we need to keep this uh, front and center, especially given um, the Fed changing what their um, allowables are. So when do we want to revisit the draft recommendations? Can I just point out one? Um, the Sustainability Committee currently has two vacancies. And I think if they have a hard time, I think if we gave them more authority, more responsibility, yep. They would attract people who were interested in water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and I think this is all part of what right. governance is. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Can Kelly? we get a, um, like specific on what the next action might be? Uh -huh. So if I'm hearing a general consensus that we want to consider expanding um, sustainability. sustainability committee responsibilities. So is that something um, this team or Chuck could take the action to come back to it. exactly what responsibilities would we be asking right. them to take on? And then um, personally, I, I, I need a little more information on this data analysis help because mm -hmm. I don't understand the difference between the data analysis they do right now versus yep. the new data analysis that they need extra help with and whether or not we really need a committee to do that or whether or not, you know, how frequently is it done? Is that something you can hire an external resource to crunch the numbers and uh, propose rate structures on a <clears throat> annual basis? I, so I just, I'm not understanding exactly what help they need versus what they already do. Kathy, I can talk to you offline if you want, or I could go sure. into it now, but you know, it's it's generally, you know, it's much more in depth than the process we're going through right now. Okay. So and it's, and it's a kind of a wholesale change actually, that they're proposing. And I, I would like to hear more on this. I think we all need to, the whole board needs to. Um, so if we're putting this on our action item list, um, which we've got the water resource protection force on there, but um, task force. I think so maybe on the 15th to... of May, we ask to have, um, more detail on on the analysis of rates. Mm -hmm. um, we should have answers by then. And um, discuss expanding sustainability, but we have to bring yeah. sustainability on for we that. Should. No, we just hand it to them. <laughs> we are um, empowered. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, we probably ought to hear more about number six, which is expand, expedite repairs to the water, um, mm -hmm. wastewater treatment plant, um, because that will save 10% of the water that we treat and reduce the amount of water that we put out, which is yeah. something else that the state regulates. And that's something that really goes into the budget because, but we would like the DPW to figure out what they need for budget so that we can get that into next year, or maybe this fall. I'll say a lot of these, a lot of these tie into the budget. Uh, you know, right. the ones that are in my court for sure. Yeah, the new, the new um, meters. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so we will come back to this on the fifteenth. Chuck, um, are you available then? Do you know? Um. Oh. I'll figure it out or I'll uh, I'll put my best guy on it. <laughs> okay. All right, so we will add that to action items. And that will be John does that and Steve? Yeah. Does that give you time? Yeah, that should be plenty of time to have a couple of alternative rate structures for you to consider. Yeah. We have a consultant on board who's doing a sanity check for us, but to tell the truth, we've built the first ever demand model for uh, Manchester drinking water. Uh, Chuck and Nate are experts at the cost side of this matter, and that's usually how rates are set to cover the costs. We're proposing that rates be set, uh, obviously enough to cover costs, but with a primary objective of conservation. Okay, so that will be uh, May 15th. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Chuck, sure. thank you. Um, and please pass on to the rest of uh, the resource task force our um, gratitude. I will, and apologies again for springing this on you. It happens. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Very Next, much. we have up approval of harbor mooring and water regulations amendments. Hi, everybody. Way by on. So uh, this is just uh, sort of the used to be annual update of the existing harbor rules and regulations. Um, it's been a couple of years because of the pandemic. 
Do you all have uh, copies of this or should I try and screen share? I have it on my computer. I have it. I have it. You have it. Oh, that's really, that makes me so happy. Okay. Uh, so if you open up the, the regulations, hopefully you have the copy with the numbers down the left side. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything that's uh, change or new is in red. And if you go to page three. Uh, a lot of this is just cleaning up the language a little bit. Um, spell check tells me to do stuff, so I do it. I add a comma if it says so. Um, first change, though, uh, line 128 through 130, uh, minimum boat length of 13 in the mooring fields for mooring boats. Uh, 13 feet because the dinghies are a maximum of 12 and we're trying not to populate the harbor with dinghies on the moorings. Um, what is a boom kin? Huh. Boom kin, well, a boom is the pointy thing off the front of a sailboat that allows more sails. A boom kin goes off the back of the boat and uh, you'll see it more commonly in a, a yawl or a, or a catch. Just gonna ask, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, so, so question by on, is, is this because there are a number of moorings that have dinghies on them that should not, or maybe they should, they're in between boats and they happen to have a season where they don't have regular boat or? Right, so that season- what's motivating this? Right, uh, more down in Magnolia, uh, that's where we have a couple of people who've put placeholder boats out there year after year after year. You can leave a mooring vacant uh, for a year per the regulation with no penalty at all. So if you're in between boats, you have a year to find it. And uh, during the pandemic when it's in, and since uh, with it being so hard to find vessels, certainly uh, there's a, a little bit of extra room for folks, but um, dinghies, are 12 feet long. You can't have anything longer than 12 feet at the dock for tender. So uh, that's tenant's designated maximum tender length. So uh, the mooring the mooring field doesn't, if, if people are going to just put uh, 12 foot dinghies out there to hold a mooring spot, we're not, not using the mooring field as it should be used. <clears throat> And first, silly question, probably. What was wrong with section K? Hey, section, where is section K? No, no, no. In the table of contents. Oh, section K. So uh, nothing's wrong except that with the changes, we have uh, moved some of the language further down. So I, all this is doing is reflecting the page change that in in the document. Okay, so, so it goes section, from J to L. Section K, L. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, okay. Yeah. That's that's me. I, I will correct that. Thank you, Ann, for pointing out that I've been very unfair to the letter K. <laughs> right. I, I, I try and defend all of my, all of the letters. You Thank have, you. Um, Thank you. And, okay. I, now I can't find it. Tenders or for the tinder, what was that? There are there are tenders and there are small boats. You're talking about at the at the uh, at the floats, you two types of permits. Yes. Tender, tender and non-tender. Tender and non-tender. Yes. Yeah, so we hang are, are we there yet? Hang on, let me. We're going to go through these one by one. Yeah, right? but but this is something that is throughout. Is is what is a non-tender? A non-tender would be a vessel twelve feet in length or less that is tied to the dock, say at Tux Point or Reed mm -hmm. Park. It is not a tender. It's not a boat that's used to get to a mooring. It's somebody okay. who's decided I'd like to have a little dinghy. At the yep. dock, 12 feet or less. Um, 
a lot of these, most of these actually are motorized. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, some are tenders and some are just runabouts or whatever you want to call them. So at line 31, section F, dot permits for tenders and tenders, is it for tenders and non-tenders? Okay, permits for tenders, yes, that's correct. Okay. It should be non-tenders. Okay. So I am... Well, oh, that's, so that's not really... Okay, so where do you Just want to take that one? Yeah, that's another typo. Thank you. You see why I come and have this done every year? <laughs> because you're a masochist? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> All right. Uh, are we good on lines 128 to 130? Yep. yep. Yes. Uh, so the next thing of any consequence mm -hmm. is page number seven seven yep uh, line 256 mm -hmm. so we we since the pandemic have developed uh, three other wait lists magnolia black beach and shallow water wait lists uh, they've all uh, got names on them they all require uh, attention um and they all will pay a fee that must be renewed by march 31st the only list that's exempt in in my opinion should be the change of location list these are folks who already have moorings they already pay a waterway fee uh so um and and once you're on it there you don't go off it until you get uh your next mooring so I just wanted to make it clear that the change of location list is exempt. And does it say change? Yep, it does say change mm -hmm. of location. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? So let me see. Page eight. Three oh seven. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, page eight, uh, line two ninety. Uh, and this here, uh, just uh, make sure that uh, other folks who want to use the the hoist at Masconomo Morse Pier, uh, do, they do not get in the way of uh, the commercial fisheries activities. Doesn't deny access, but the fishermen have priority. So, mm -hmm. for example. In the past, uh, the ferry that went to Baker's Island would need to use the hoist. And we just want to make sure that other users are making sure fishermen get the priority. They're coming in with live lobsters that need to get delivered to the wholesaler as soon as possible. So that's the and all that goes to you. So there's no change on that buy on. Is that? Correct. Uh, no change as far as, I'm sorry. I just don't see anything highlighted in that section. On page uh, two, on line 290? Correct. More spear. It isn't highlighted for yours. Well, I apologize. So uh, mm -hmm. mine says, with prior permission of the harbor master, and yep. that should have been highlighted. That's new. Okay. Thank you. That's the new section. I'll, I'll make sure I read that. And then if we go down to line 308, uh, we've changed most of the uh, free tie up period at the town docks from 60 minutes to 30 minutes. So 30 minutes would be the, the new number. How did you come up with that? Well, 60 minutes has always been an overwhelmingly long time uh, compared to any harbor in New England. And the problem with 60 minutes is that it encourages people to come in and go do things that might take more than an hour. And if you're going to do that, then we now have 250 feet of uh, transient docking space available for you. 
And this here just ensures that those 75 feet of free tie up that we've always had uh, is uh, more readily available uh, for folks who are coming in, going for an ice cream, going to the store. Uh, you know, most of that short term tie up is is less than half an hour. Okay. And um, is there a place where um, someone who has who has picked up a mooring in the harbor for overnight can bring a dinghy? Yeah, so absolutely. It? And so anyone who's on a mooring, uh, transient guest, uh, can bring their dinghy in and tie up on the back side of any of the docks free of charge. We don't charge for dinghy tie up. You're not allowed to tie up on the face where the big boats are. You have all kinds of free space in the back. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so going to page nine. I did get it right here, line 313, where it was tender dock regulations. Now it says tender and non-tender regulations. Line 314, we added ANCH non-tender. And dock space may not be passed down in a family. That was already there. Mostly what I've done is added ANCH non-tender wherever it says tenders. Yep. Mm -hmm. Going down, same right through line 330. Before we go on, yep. line 320. Yep. Um, is so, where it says vessels, comma, town docks are. Should that be or? Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. I'm correcting it as we speak. Thank you. It's not a biggie, but I'm just. Uh, no, this is good. Clear. This is good. More eyes on. It gets cleaner every time. Okay. So now we go to page 10. Keep going. Mostly corrections other people have made to my typing. Going to page 18. Page and 18. page 19. On page 14, you had line 5, 13, page 512, 513. In terms 14, of 5, 13. Uh, 5, 13. 5, 13, yep. It just hyphenated it. Okay. Um, yeah, that was the spell check thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, so on to page 19. And it just talks about the renewal of uh, tenders um, and making sure those permits are paid on an annual basis. Um, do you mean on 734 tie up of tenders and non-tenders? Yes, and non-tenders. Thank you. And... Number 723 or 731, which spelling? Uh, -E -E I have seven, you said 723? Yep. I have town hall on 723. No, then you're 725. Yeah. 
where it says. Oh, Reed Park. Park. That's yeah. It's R. It's R E E. Sorry. Yep. No. No. That's that's much better. Oh, and there it is again down there. All right. Good. Got it. This is a showing one. Oh. All right. And going down now to page. Twenty-three. Uh, Twenty-three. Yes. So now we're getting down to the the new fees, um, the dredge assessment, uh, which was approved a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. uh, two fifty per foot for all vessels. And then the non-tender small boat fee, rather than the $75 that a mooring holder pays, uh, somebody who wants to just keep the little boat at the dock, um, the fee's $200. And then uh, as far as wait lists go, no matter where, which field you've chosen, uh, it's $20 annually to be on that fee, on that. Yeah, on that wait list, sorry. And then we've had the change. This was actually right after the last approval uh, that year, uh, the Reed Park transient overnight tie-up fee uh, went from $60 flat rate to $3 a foot. And that's it. Um, so three dollars a foot for overnight, eight dollars hourly for spending the afternoon. Correct. Right. You, no matter the size of your vessel, it's eight dollars an hour. So, so by on a question, what um, so what led you to that particular number, um, and why not change the hourly? What type, what communities did you look at to see if we were competitive? Well, $3 a foot is on the very low side. We have zero amenities, um, no uh, water on the dock, no electricity on the dock, no restrooms, no showers, nothing. We have absolutely nothing. So $3 a foot uh, really would be uh, appropriate. Uh, there are other communities around us charging significantly more, uh, some charging a little bit more. Uh, $5 a foot is not uncommon, but there are amenities for those folks. So back in 2020, I was the HAC thought $3 a foot would be the appropriate amount. And then the hourly rate of $8. Um, the goal that the HAC and I all really wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that the boaters contributed for coming in and having access to such a great dock, but we did not want to prohibit people spending money in the business, businesses downtown. And $8 has been very well received. Uh, people think it's fair and they go and they spend a lot of money in the shops and stores and restaurants downtown, which is really ultimately the goal. So I'm just wondering because it's an odd number. I would have yep. gone over 10. You know, I mean yep. Yep. <laughs> so. 10, 10, two figures is a little harder for folks to swallow than eight. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, the the price can change any time. I I We'll, we'll charge whatever uh, folks want. But back when we first opened in 2019, I didn't like the flat rate for the overnight, but uh, I, I don't think anybody else even charges for an hourly tie-up, if I'm not mistaken. And unless you're going to Pickering Wharf and then you're paying uh, a flat rate of $25 for coming in and tying up to go to eat. I would say 16 is a lot more common for us two hours. So I I think it's I I think 
we don't need to beat up the voters at the dock. I'd rather have them get beat up in the shops. We, did make, <laughs> we, we made $32,000 uh, at the dock last year. Um, and that was with our really low overnight rate. And it, it was an off year compare, compared to the last year. I don't know if that was fuel costs that kept some of the folks away, but the shops all did really well. I think if we were to walk around and ask restaurant owners and, and others if, if the re-parked docks have made a business, difference in their numbers, they'll tell you yes. And that that's, to me, that's the real goal. Mm -hmm. And they're not coming in and taking any parking spaces in the street. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any other comments or questions on these? Um, I move to. But before we do that, I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six of uh, other de minimis changes. So. Okay. Uh, if. if Anybody wants me to go over those now, we can. Otherwise, we can approve with these being sent to buy. And I don't think we need to spend I'm, time on this. I'm happy to have you send them to me and I'll I'll correct those before I send the final out. All right. I move to approve the um harbor mooring and waterway regulation amendments. Um with the de minimis corrections provided by um, Chairman um, Jakes. Okay, moved by Ann Harrison, seconded by Brian Solisty, roll call vote. Ann Harrison? Yes. Kathy Bellotta? Yes. Brian Solisty? Yes. John Round? Yes. And Becky Jake says yes. Thank you, Bion. Thank very you all nice very much. Thank you. I'll yeah. email those to you after the meeting this evening. All right, that's great. Thank you. Okay, next up we have um, the library review grant process for possible expansion. Um, and I do want to um, make one comment on that. There we go. Um, the, the letter that was sent out. Um, by David Lumsden and um, when he was saying what I what I was agreeing to, um, it, it wasn't that I was in agreement um, with all the uses. I did think they were important, but I was not in agreement from the standpoint of speaking for the board. I just want to make that clarification. So we have Rick Rogers tonight. We're starting a little bit late. You have 10 minutes. Take well, it I, away. I will get you back on schedule. I think as fast as possible. Um, hi, everyone. Rick Rogers, 82 Old Essex Road, Chairman of the Library Trustees. Um, what we're asking for this evening is your acknowledgement and, I guess, approval, uh, basically to open the door to apply for a grant a year from now. So if, if you'd like to discuss the need for expansion and enhancement of the library, I'm happy to discuss or read a statement about why the trustees feel that a, a library change is needed. Um, I think if you've been in the library, you recognize it as a small space, um, even challenged in towns of our own size to meet the number of services that those libraries provide. Um, ADA access, any number of different things, right? So we're looking at um, a strategic plan that's been in place for a while now to expand the library, a request from our patronage and township when we've done surveys with them to expand library services. So it's been seven years since Massachusetts has opened the door for grants to, for library expansion, and the door is coming open again next year. What we're looking to do is simply state a letter of intent to apply for a grant by May 31st of 2024. If we don't state our intent right now with the town acknowledgement, 
that application will not be considered. We have a year plus to figure out what our plans might be and decide if we will proceed with that grant application or not. This is really just our foot in the door to keep the door open. We are looking at a couple of different adjacent properties to potentially purchase. The grant could account for some of that. We also have savings between the Library Foundation and recent endowments that would help the town that's offset the acquisition of that property. What the expansion might look like, I don't think we know at this point, right? We, we have absolutely would want to consider the town plan, senior centers, community centers, whatever else might be involved in a typical modern library. This is literally just to keep the process going or initiate the process. And that's all we're looking to do. Thank you. And I will say we are very well acquainted with this type of a process. We know exactly what this does and, and how it works. So let me go around to the board. Um, any questions, John? Yeah, a, a couple. So this application is in there and I guess it's for, who's the granting agency? Uh, it's run through an organization called Amplifund, but I believe okay. it is overseen by the Massachusetts yeah. Board of Library Trustees. But I, I assume it's for them to keep score so that they know how many institutions are interested. Absolutely. And that's they, why the process hasn't been open for seven years. Right. Because they get such a backlog. Are, are we going to hear back from them at all? Or, they're just, or just an acknowledgement, we've got your letter, and that's it. That's a great question. Um, I know it is reviewed, like we're applying for the full $100,000 grant and they have an option to, I think, reduce that. I believe that there will be a response to our application or our letter of intent, but I honestly don't know. I can't answer that question this evening. Okay, next. <laughs> Brian? No, I, I think they will bring up. I think, and very clearly explained. Mm -hmm. Um, no questions. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion? I move that we agree to endorse the application of the library for a grant. Um, uh, is there some Mass program? Massachusetts Public Library Commission program grant for the Massachusetts a letter of intent? A letter of intent for the Massachusetts, sorry. Massachusetts Public Library Commission program grant. Massachusetts yeah. Public Library Commission grant. Grant process. process. What's, what's she saying? Yeah. <laughs> we have a second. Second. Okay, moved by Ann Harrison, seconded by John Round. Roll call vote. John Round? Yes. Brian Solison. Yes. Kathy Plata. Ann Harrison? Yes. Becky Jake says yes. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Do we do we have that sign right now? And we can let Mr. Rogers get on his merry way. Fine. But you get on with your Mary meeting. Or Mary meeting, if you're not going to hang in. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't at the dentist until I was doing my taxi. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We thank you all for the rest of the uh, around. board of trustees. Yeah, okay, so I think Greg has to Greg. sign oh. it. Do I take it, Greg, or do you want to get, just give it to Sarah? Thank you. Okay, next up we have planning board alternate discussion. Um, Greg, do you want to start this one? Or uh, sure. So, um, as part of the um, proposed amendments to the zoning bylaw, section 12. This is the administrative piece um, that uh, was passed over at town meeting, um, but it contained a proposal that 
um, the, there would be alternate two alternates to the planning board, um, the seven member board. They were proposing to have two alternates who um, serve in the, in cases where uh, a regular member might have to recuse themselves for a conflict or some other um, reason. Um, and the proposal was for for the planning board to appoint um, those alternates. And so I think you wanted to have a discussion about. Um, about that, um, the alternative perhaps is for you and the planning board to, to make that a, a joint appointment um, because that's the same process that's used for filling a vacancy um, on the planning board. Um, and I, talking to a couple of you, you know, the logic is, is that um, an, an alternate would be a, a very high candidate, likely candidate to fill a vacancy should, should a vacancy come up. Um, so I think the thinking is that perhaps in appointing the alternate, it should be the same process. John? So uh, questions. The alternates are needed because there are a lot of people that recuse themselves. Not a lot. But it or enough that it, it, it comes up. An issue. Yeah, where someone is going to be away and going to miss a meeting, you know, that sort of thing. Or they need specific expertise if they was one of the... Uh, well, someone would have to the step day. down. Someone okay. would have to step down in order for that alternate to participate. So it doesn't happen a lot, um, but it has it has happened. Okay, okay. And is the intent is this at the pleasure of the chair or somebody recuses themselves, they may not necessarily be replaced. It automatically is going to happen. So it would generally automatically okay. be, it would be up to the chair to do that, but the, the yes. expectation would be that the, the chair would then um, place an alternate instead of someone who has had to step down. I thought the whole board said that they would be selecting that person, not not the sole discretion of the chair. No, I'm just talking about the so alternates we, would be chosen by the full board, but whether or not an alternate would serve, I think would be the duty of the chairperson to, to notify the alternate when they're needed. Yeah, but Becky's bringing up the point, how many alternates are involved? And then which one is it? First is that what you're... <laughs> so, you're, you're at the pleasure of the chair? You rotate it or I don't know. Right. How does the zoning board of appeals handle its alders? I can speak to that. I thought yes. it was. <laughs> uh, we have three voting uh the voting members, and then there are two alternates. Mm -hmm. Okay. For instance, tomorrow night. Um one author will be stepping up because the uh, voting member won't be there. Um, so usually, for the most part, everyone, including alternates, will show up to a site uh, visit. Uh, but if uh, the chair recognizes it's going to be a problem because uh, she was notified in advance, then she'll reach out and make sure that there'll be people who show up. Okay. And for a lot, of, most of the time, everyone's there, including the alternate, just even to sit through the, the entire the meeting. Uh, going through 40B was very important mm -hmm. to have everyone at front. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it becomes, it's almost a, a I don't know, uh, you know in advance if you're not going to make a meeting, you'll notify the chair that you won't be there. And uh, it works out very well. And then trying to step down is okay. <laughs> Ryan? Uh, no, I think I I, uh, I I support the alternates. I also feel that the select board should have a voice in the selection of these alternates. Kathy? Yeah, same. And uh, uh, I believe the discussion at the planning board that the need for the alternates was based on availability. They wanted to make sure they could have the right votes in a timely mm -hmm. manner um, and not be worried about people's availability. So I support that, but I do think the select board should um, should play a role in selecting the alternates. Um, as do I. I, I um, having served on that board as well, um, as well as chairing it for a while, um, I, I think it's important to maintain how people are appointed in the town. And it has always been a joint 
um, appointment. And I, I don't see, I haven't heard any good arguments for it being otherwise. Um, okay, so I think we are, I'm hearing everyone is in agreement with that, correct? Greg, mm -hmm. do you want anything more from us other than that at this point? No, I think that's fine. Can, can we just take a vote just so that it's yes. official? Yep. Move that we recommend that um, alternates to the planning board be selected by um, a at a joint meeting of the planning board and the select board. Second. Okay, moved by Ann Harrison, seconded by Kathy Bellotta. Roll call vote. Ann Harrison? Yes. Kathy Bellotta? Yes. Brian Solisty? Yes. Don Round? Yes. And Becky Jake says yes. Okay, thank you. Um, next up for discussion, we are talking about. Hand up from Ron. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, hello, Ron. I didn't see. Oh, there you go. Ron? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, just just a quick, could you uh, just send us uh, the reason why you feel that way, that it should be a joint decision? I think that's what the board was interested in. And then I think I would bring it up to the board whether we move this uh, forward for a fall town meeting. Bless you. Okay. Um, Greg, can you do that, or or Debbie? Thank you, Ron. Thanks. Okay, so now we have uh, the MBTA task force. We are not discuss. We're not. Um, choosing. Uh, candidates this evening. We will be doing that at the next meeting. Um, but one of the questions, we need to figure out which one of us will serve on the task force and uh, a couple other items to discuss. Um, does anybody from the board specifically feel inclined? I do. Okay, wonderful. All right. And anybody else? Okay. With your ever decreasing free time, we will appoint Anne as the liaison for the MBTA, or not liaison, but the member for the select board to the MBTA task force. Um, Thank you. And if you need a if you need a backup, let me know. I would be very happy. Oh, I can I can as well. Would you prefer to? Yeah, I'd prefer to. Okay. All right. So Anne is at bat and John is on deck. Okay, so one of the questions that we've been need to address in terms of um, the at-large candidates is um, whether or not to have people who are not here year round. The concern being that this is going to be a very critical task force um, with a lot of asks, and I think it might cause some issues if we do not have people who are here and present and able to go on meetings um, around town. What if, What is going to be the life of this task force? When does it start? And when does it end? Does this have a hard end on the 31st of December in 2024? Well, it'll really be done before then because mm -hmm. the town has to vote before then. I'm trying to get a handle on the seasonality. So it's basically right. it's basically starting, you know, in a, in a couple of weeks, a couple of three weeks until 
the latest would be, you know, November 24. So it'll be in fairly intensive work for the next year at a minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, most likely a year and a half. I had a question, just a clarifying question on your point. Mm -hmm. um, was it that you think all members of the task force should be full-time residents or just the at-large? No, I think everybody okay, on I the just task force. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in residents, not yeah. zooming in because there will be a lot of site. There'll be site walks. Involved, yeah. A lot they'll of that. At, so. They'll be looking at section of the town. They'll be uh, having having being in person is pretty important. Yeah. 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 I've, I've just got a question. Is that something that say? I mean, the zoning board has to deal with that a lot. Maybe not so much the planning board. I don't know. Of course, you guys have alternates. I was at a uh, site visit today before we came here. You know, we for the zoning board, we're just we're just basically committed to one night a week, one night a month for uh, our one site visit it was Saturdays. We moved down now as the summer progresses to an evening, and one night. So basically, it's not a big commitment from the zoning board standpoint, but we're not looking at policy. And okay. this is going We're not to be policy. I, yeah, I mean, this is yeah. leading to policy. Right. Yeah. I mean, at that point, but I think that what I'm hearing is that uh, you know there's going to be a lot of work, a lot of information gathering, uh, and it's it's going to be a big time suck for someone. Several someone. Some, some, some. But and this is I, I would like to get um, the rest of the board's perspective on what I feel is pretty critical for um, members of this task force. And it's not that, I mean, yeah, you can go away and zoom in here and there, but but if you go away for months at a time, I, I don't I don't think I think that's a detriment to the task force. I uh, I think that this is a critical juncture and and the growth of the town, and someone has to yeah. do it. And so, uh, a commitment, potential growth. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. one way or the other, it's 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 critical, mm -hmm. and that uh, someone has to be willing to be able to make that commitment, and that gives us a sense of how seriously they're going to take the uh, the uh, the role that they're they're committing to. Right. Kathy. Yeah, I think that's a fair request. It's a pretty important. Um, task force um, and the, the physical nature of the meetings, um, you know, they are going to happen at any time in the year. And if you're not here, tough to participate. Right. So yeah, I think that's a fair request. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's a fair request. I typically take some time, a lot of time off in August. Mm -hmm. But I can come back, and I will. Um, and I think it's you know Maine isn't nearly as far as Florida, or <laughs> so. Okay. Um, do you need a formal motion, Greg, on that? It, it always helps to formalize it. Okay. In that case, we need to be a little bit more formal about what we mean by going yeah. away. Um, to that point, I don't want to preclude a really qualified person. You know, so we have to, yeah, so, you know, is it a three month extended stay? Is it a one month extended stay? You know, I mean, more to the point, it's not that people are away. I mean, if you want to spend the money on flights, and come back weekly. Yeah. Or two, yeah. yeah. Be my guest. A lot of miles. <laughs> well, plus it's it's being available to that's, that's yeah. the issue. That's the issue. And, being and, available and I at think that's 48 hours notice or something. And it, it's well, you need more than that because you'd have to post it. Okay. But um so you know, they, I'd hate to have somebody be appointed and then they say, well, I can't do I can't do it now. 
So, so maybe the, I think what we're asking is what is the criteria for membership, right? That's really what we're trying to discuss. Um, are there any similar requirements at any of our other, like the ZBA, any other? Any well, yeah, all the board boards and committees. If right. you miss, I think it's three consecutive meetings, you have that you, you've effectively that's, ground, um, that's grounds for removal. That's grounds for removal. Right. Okay. But with with Zoom, you know, that's that's not counting as missing a meet, right? You know, so I think there's where I'm asking is there um is there a way to phrase the requirement mm -hmm. in a similar way, but give the person some um um expectation as to how many meetings will happen or how frequently the meetings might happen so, so they can attest that they will, you know, understand those meetings have to be in person. They have to be available in person, not Zoom. And here's what we expect and the could, frequency to be. Can I ask also, uh, not only with the posted meetings, but is there uh, an assumption that there will be other sub-meetings, as it were, you know, you know, that you're all of a sudden, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, what I mean, it doesn't have to be posted, but you know, we're going to be getting together uh, to discuss something. Probably not, I don't no. think. Well, there could well be, yeah, some, some is... groups working on X, Y, and Z, but those would be uh, normally those would be posted meetings. So, my point is okay, so, okay. So, so that, that, that most of these meetings are, shall we call them site meetings? That we're really talking about, I mean, physically there, not physically in the same room, but physically at whatever place you're looking at. Well, that, I think that's the concern. And obviously, the, the meetings correct. that you can do by Zoom, but you can't do All a right. Zoom meeting on site. So, so it seems to me, if you miss two or three consecutive site meetings. But that puts you behind the eight ball. Obviously, you gotta stop that's right. Stop. Then you're having to play catch up by bringing somebody else in. Yeah. And right now we have... Um, FinCom member, ZBA member, planning board, two planning board yeah. members, um, historic district commission, select board, ConCom, downtown improvement, and then two at large. So, and one of the at large with climate change experience. So, So do we do we want to um, is the criteria that we want these people to be year round residents? I mean, certainly we're not precluding people going on vacation, right? Exactly. So we want year round residents. Um, is is that a way of phrasing it, or is that well the. It doesn't preclude anybody from going You're on vacation. You're a year-round resident. It's, it's, it's all about the meat. Yeah. You know, even yeah. if you go away for three months at a time. That's not what I would mean as a year-round resident. So that's I right. It's, it's about the meetings. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, if you want to go down there every weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know people that do that. Wow. So I guess what I'm asking then, <laughs> can we phrase it such as expect, you know, a person who makes this commitment to the task force must be available for bi-weekly or weekly in-person meeting. I mean, just- Yeah, something like something that. Something like that. It has to be meeting oriented rather than lifestyle. Yeah, meeting. okay, yeah. That's correct. Yeah. So yeah. would they, would the task force be meeting weekly? Would it be, no, bi-weekly? Yeah, probably, probably the most is twice a month. Okay, so- With, with, with potentially some work in between and subcommittee work in between and maybe yeah. a site visit in between. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I would envision. So it, it will be fairly intensive work for you know, a 16 month period or so. Uh, I, guess well, I would say that someone's willing to make that commitment. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that like you said, you know, as long as they're aware of what the commitment is that they're making. And that's-, that's Tell me, can you do it or can't you do it? Yeah, that's important. So I think we need to think on this a little bit. Um, um, Firm up. Maybe that's during the interview process. Yeah. Yep. We asked a question. I, I agree. I think we can do it that way. But as we're um, announcing the position and, and looking for candidates, mm -hmm. the announcement should say yes. that this is requires um, multiple meetings per month in person. In person, mm -hmm. yes. Yep. I'm good at that. Uh, 
are we suggesting that that's a this is the question I asked earlier is that for everybody on the board and do these people who have already been named do they understand that I, I think there is a distinction between board and committee members um, who already have well, I don't know. Well, that's my original yeah, question. Yeah, so I'm yeah. just are we, are we I, I imposing the it, expectations yep. just on the at large yep. people or everybody. Yeah, the board people had to held a different a standard, which is these three meetings in a row sort of thing. I'm just asking the question. Yeah, yeah, I think it needs to be everybody. Everybody okay. needs to be. So there. we already have people who have been named by their committees. And we can't impose restrictions now. That's what I'm and that's what I'm asking. I, I don't see a problem with okay. the group. Um, and we, there's always the possibility that if they, if someone misses three meetings, which would include site visits in a row, then they can be. Mm -hmm. That still who applies it, regardless. Who is accountable for monitoring that? Is this, does this task force come under the planning board? So planning it would board, be up to the planning board yeah. to yes. notice that people are not attending. Yeah, typically the okay. Okay. Ron has his hand up. Yeah. Ron. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, is the selection of at-large uh, candidates a joint decision by the planning board and the select board, or should is it be. Just... should be? Okay. That was at least my understanding. Okay. So, what you're deciding is. Um, on their uh, availability, and that's your decision, I guess. Uh, right. Well, it's, it's be your recommendation. I, yeah, it's more of a recommendation, Ron. Okay. And, and you can, as I said, doing particularly agreeing to do it as a joint, you can again have the have the discussion, ask people's availability, and. That can, be right. part of the, that can be part of the conversation. Does that answer that or answer your question, Ron? Yes, I, I, I guess. I just, um, I, I was curious. This, this um, task force, they'll report back to the planning board at some time ahead of the deadline. I would think. Is is that the pr process? I, I would expect so. I would think it would have to report back to both boards. Well, no. Um, yes, of course, to, to both boards, but <laughs> we, we frequent updates, and mm -hmm. I don't want to see this come down to a town and a special town meeting in late November. Right. Mm -hmm. Where um, Wednesday before Thanksgiving, yeah, <laughs> but it probably will. I won't be there. Yeah, I think there's some urgency here, and and uh, I agree. Okay. So, if you want to try to set that up at your next meeting, so are time, there, time is ticking away. So, yeah, when are we yeah. going to promote? So it's been promoted at different board meetings, but we can promote it in the next two weeks. What about the call for, like a general call for um, interest? Applicants or whatever. Applicants, yeah, through our Facebook, Cricket, our Google, we've done all that. I don't think, like I said, I don't, I don't, there haven't been an article, but there's been. Uh, I mean, a posting in the Cricket. Yeah, there's been a couple of postings, but we can do some more. And we have, we've had three or four people I express some interest. All right, so we would, I don't want to wait much longer to get this um, going. Uh, when, when can we next get this addressed? Should we just set up a joint meeting with the planning board sooner than later? So in the next, you know, within the next three weeks, it would be nice to do that. So either as part of your next regular or part of the next planning board regular or a special meeting. 
Okay. Those, those are the three options. Yeah. yeah. What, do so, you know when the next planning board takes Monday? So, Ron, you meet on the twenty. You meet next week, and then we're meeting on Monday, yeah. correct? And then, and then, and then you meet again on the eighth. On the eighth. So it would, and it's too early to do next week, I would think. But the plan, well, we can't. It's already post. But um, so our uh, our next meeting is somewhere. five one. Yep. Five eight or five fifteen. Five one. Yeah. I can zoom in. Um, Ron. Yes. Do you um, ha what do you think about having um, a joint meeting with Select Board and Planning Board on the first to interview at large members? Um. That's a possibility. Um, let's see. Our next meeting is Monday. So, yep, I can bring it up to the board on that on Monday and get back to you. Is that yep. enough time? That'd be great. So, I guess the alternative would be. Uh, what about the fifteenth? Uh, well. Well, or the eighth. Or the eighth. Or meeting on the eighth. I mean, you're still looking to get candidates, correct? We do. We have some already, um, oh. people who are interested. We can do another. Another push. Yeah. And, and, and the first is still three weeks away. Yeah, that's true. OK. Two weeks? Two, two weeks away. Two weeks okay. away. Two weeks away. Okay, so that's that's yeah. All right, so we could we can if you want to talk with the board and see if they have a preference for uh, first or the eighth. Correct. So does okay. the eighth work for majority of you? Well, not the zoom in general. Yes, we John, are you oh, around? Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, I can make my schedule fit. Dan, are you around? I don't have a schedule. I'm not sure I can zoom in. I could try. Timing difference is going to be five hours difference. Let me see. Or six. Um, if we can do the eight. Hmm? A lot of math. I know. My head's a real. So. All right. So we will put to the first or the eighth. The task force. Um, the MBTA zoning task force appointments, correct? Okay. Uh, next up, early voting discussion. Everybody have an opportunity to read this over. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom, the, the question is, do we want to have early voting in person for this upcoming election or go ahead and leave it at the um, absentee ballot? Which is- I thought that, I thought it had missed the cutoff. So, so you, That's you, a mail have, you have voting by mail. That is, you will have voting by mail because you missed the cutoff. Too. That, right. for, for, which yes. I would do anyway. So it's basically means you have absentee for, for anybody and everybody. You don't have to qualify, mm -hmm. which is a pretty loose qualification. Uh, yeah, Anyways. <laughs> Whatever your problem is, it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, the question is do you want to, in addition to that, do you feel it's appropriate to have at least some, some hours for in person early voting? And the Board of Registrars voted not mm -hmm. to opt for that. Um, but the question that Kathy had, and we were unable to get an answer to, is how many people are being precluded by our not doing that? That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. There was a memo. So, yes, there's a memo. There was yeah, a memo, there was, but she didn't have no, it. She, didn't there was, she couldn't break that one number out. Right. Well, we had 12, okay. like they're in the pandemic. And it's, you know, this is, pan these are pandemic numbers in 2020 mm -hmm. and 2021. So mm -hmm. I was hoping we would get some numbers from last year, which is very robust 
voting period right. for us. Um, right. It's a shame we don't have that. Is it, I guess, I'm, is there any reason why we can't have it and then track how many people actually yeah. show up yeah. and get mm -hmm. data? And then if we decide it's not worth it, we don't do it again next year. But I just feel odd getting yeah. back on the opportunities to vote when we don't have good data. I, I agree. And I'm just not comfortable. John? Uh, I would agree. I also wonder if the registrars asked this question. I, I, I'm not sure they did based on the fact that they were not in favor of mail-in voting. This was either. just money. I think uh, I got the impression that it was a time, time is money. Time and underutilization. Yeah, no, I Historically understand. Historically underutilized. Or so at I least they that. thought it was underutilized because we really don't know what that we number is. But, mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't think you have to have it. You know, 10 hour days for right. for two weeks. I mean, I don't think you could be selective. Selective and just give yeah, people so, who are busy or, you know, after work, you know, something that would give people so an yeah. opportunity. To. We're talking about hours outside of the hours that the office is normally open. I don't uh, know. No, 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 on Saturday? That was it wasn't no. Saturday an option? No, I thought Saturday, Saturday, Saturday was an option. Oh. Saturday is an option. Yeah. yeah. So so in other words, it would be open on Saturdays, early voting. I don't know, what is this, like two or three data. Saturdays? Well, that would be a decision that doesn't have to be made now. What days are going to be open? Just have to... Or we just, you know, they can set up the early voting as they do right in the entry. Yeah. Oh, sure. it's right there. The Thursday night. I would think a couple of evenings and um, some hours on Saturday would make it easier for people who commute mm -hmm. to work. Mm -hmm. and track it. And, track and then if it right. shows up, we know it's not needed. Right. You know? So do we, we need to... We're running out of time. We have to set those dates down. Yeah. I guess I might suggest you with those parameters, I asked Diane to propose propose something and then we, we finalize that okay. at the next meeting. I I do think that we'd be better off having more information before we yeah. limit options. But you're thinking of a couple of evenings, a Saturday and maybe Sunday. Two evenings on a Saturday. Yeah, that's, that should be plenty. Mm -hmm. Ron, is that oh, yeah, and I'm 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 fine. I, I leave it up to Diane. Common sense there. Okay. <clears throat> Are we ready to go to consent agenda? <sighs> right. Um, anything that someone wants to pull out from consent agenda? All right. Oh, just to, I put, was it? I have to recuse myself from the okay one of the meetings. Yeah, as, uh, let me see what I sent to Betty. It would be March twentieth. You were absent. Okay, according to the meeting minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I I sent. De minimis again. Okay. The changes. On the, on the February 9th, mm -hmm. on the first page, talking about the Harbor Master, and it says, Mr. Federsfield recommends that the SRO officer serve full time with the Harbor Master. And that's not exactly what they meant. And and in the summer. Yes. No, but it's not it's that. not the SRO officer. Correct. Who's, it's that him or slot. herself. It's that, it's that slot. slot. It's that right. Slot. Yeah. And and other than that, I'm prepared to accept all of these. Okay. Um, we need to pull out March 20. No, I I will. In addition, okay. I'll just we can't vote myself collectively. from that. So I will vote on everything except a March 20 minutes. No. Uh, let's see. Move to accept the minutes of February 9th, 2023. Second. Okay. Be March ends, February. You want to do 
I was asking if we wanted to pull okay. out March yeah, 20th just the pull out agenda March 20th and, and then then vote on it. I, I <clears throat> withdraw my motion and move to approve the minutes of February 9th, March 6th, and March 6th. How about the whole consent agenda? And the rest of the consent agenda. Second. Okay. Moved by Ann Harrison, seconded John Round. Roll call vote. John Round. Yes. Brian Salas. Yes. Kathy Bellotta. Yes. Ann Harrison. Yes. Becky Jake says yes. I'll move to approve the minutes of March 20th. Second. Moved by Ann Harrison, seconded Kathy Bellotta. Roll call vote. Ann Harrison. Yes. yes. Kathy Bellotta. Yes. Brian Salas. Yes. John Round. Yes. And Becky Jake does not vote on that. All right, could, could we just agree that um, Don Halpern should get? There, there is, he'll, he'll be attending the next meeting. Okay, fine. We all agree with that. Yes. Okay, town administrator report. I'll keep up with very brief tonight. Um, obviously the work on School Street is ongoing. Um, a fairly large construction sure. project. It's uh, is something on the agenda. The Arbor Day. Yes. Yes, that was in the consent agenda. Oh, there was. I'm sorry, you've been you sitting here to... waiting for us to. Yes. <laughs> she has a full speech. I'm just, no, oh. I wasn't in the I wanted to hear. You're not going to. We want to hear. Do you want to go for it? Go for it. it. You sat here sorry. forever. Go no. for Speaking out of turn. No, no. Well, I did send. A minimal change. Did you see that? that? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, yes. And okay, you don't have to. <clears throat> I just, I need like five seconds. On behalf of the friend, uh, the friends of Manchester Trees, we thank the board. And you're very busy. <laughs> a long evening for consent for this consent and proclamation. It will be read at the planting at Memorial School the morning of April 28th. When we plant a new American elm down by the tennis courts. Again, thank you very much for joining us. And I will be there to make a presentation with the proclamation. My name is Jody Morse. And, <laughs> and any other board members who wish to attend, attend that would be it's wonderful. A, it's a great scene, sure. Yes. <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry, Jody. Yeah. And once, Jody once is again. our new head of Friends of Trees. Oh, yes, right. The new head. I'm Good. the new president. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Good night. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, Gar. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye, bye. Bye. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Uh, just mentioned the, the obviously the construction on, on School Street is ongoing. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty major project in terms of resetting all the curbing, um, replacing the sidewalks, and repaving the road itself. Um, so it'll continue on for, for three, three, four more weeks. Um, should be done uh, by the third week of May at, at the latest. Um, and uh, yeah, if people can avoid it, that's that's the recommendation. There'll be continual uh, detours over the next few weeks, but it's progressing well. And, um, it's uh, total cost is a little over a million dollars. Partly due to asphalt and uh, etc. Uh, but uh, EPW was able to. Bring together the necessary dollars to make it happen. So it'll be a significant improvement when it's done. So sewer, sewer pipe done, water pipe done, and now new sidewalks and now new road. So yeah. are they doing granite edging all along there? Not all along, just because of the price. It's yeah. it's like uh, it's more than 10 times the cost mm -hmm. uh, for for granite. And the, the new granite wouldn't match the old granite. Yeah. Uh, what about the asphalt versus um Concrete. Yeah, they've got cement. Oh, right. So every time you get a plow go by asphalt, like the the sidewalks that are asphalt, they don't seem to have a very long life. Right. Again, it's a function of cost. Well, I, but, I, I know the but are we looking costs. at total cost of right. ownership? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. what's the useful life of a concrete sidewalk right. versus an asphalt? Because the Pine Street was done not that long ago, and yeah, they're a mess. Well, and also with the concrete, you can't you do those, you can do those yeah. in pads exactly. and lift them up. Well, but they, I did, they did over here, it was all make believe. But I also think that the concrete curbing 
makes a better definition between the sidewalk and the road. Right. And I, I just have concerns about um, <coughs> the, the macadam. Not... So it... Say it again. Well, it isn't, at this point, it's already been brought out, hasn't it? Going forward. Yeah. I mean, school, street is, school streets. I'm not aware. We have concrete, um, the concrete curves anywhere in town. Hmm. Uh, that. Hard press to think that we did. I can't think of my former community. It was a lot of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the machine just goes right up. And yeah. Towards the concrete. But I'm just curious. Because so it, it looked like, from a distance, it looks like granite. So, is this a topic that we could talk about at a later date, yep. either as part yep. of our capital planning or whatever? But it, it really feels like we're not looking at total cost of ownership. And if there's one thing I get a lot of complaints about when my neighbors come and talk to me when I'm on a yeah. walk, yeah. it's the sidewalks. Yeah. They're not in good shape. And we're, it feels like we're wasting money. Well, they are on a um, on a cyclic repair, yeah. but if we- But they don't last long enough to make it yeah. to the next repair. <laughs> so that, that's a discussion yeah. we need to Another have time. with yeah. Chuck. So yeah. could we take an action to put that on? Um, an agenda, please. Okay, what do you want that action called? So, um, uh, sidewalks, sidewalk uh, comparison of options, right. sidewalks and curbs, and curbs, sidewalk and curbs option. That's good. Okay, um, Chuck will be coming on the 15th for the water resource protecting task force. Do we want to try to get information for the 15th as well for that? I would expect he would already have it if they made a yeah. decision on what yeah. to use. So that would be great, I think. All right. So, um, Debbie, you've got that action item on. Greg, you'll be able to ask, talk about that. Okay. Um, are you all set? I'm all set. Okay. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn the open meeting and not to return to open meeting for the purpose of executive session per Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and the chair so declares. So moved. Second. Okay, who seconded? Okay, Van Harrison seconded Brian Solacy. Roll call vote. Yes, yes. Brian Solacy, yes. Kathy Bellotto, Van Harrison. Yes. And Becky Jake says yes. Thank you all very much for attending this evening. And um, we can stop the recording. All right. Um.